Hello everyone, my name is Apostle Talaeddin. I recently hosted a live stream where I invited callers to correct my understanding about gullibility and religion. Uh, the premise was not that believers are gullible, but that a gullible person has an advantage over a skeptic if the end goal is blind faith and belief. I elaborated on that a lot more in the live stream. The last caller was Muhammad. Uh, he had been on debates on YouTube before, but I was not aware of that when he joined. And he had a hard time sticking to the topic of the stream, but it was a civil conversation nonetheless. Uh, now, I'm not going to pick it apart, I'll just let you watch it. But I have some thoughts that I'd like to share at the end in order to not interfere with your viewing experience. So without further ado, enjoy. Hey, how's it going? Good, yourself? I am good, thanks, and thanks for waiting for this long. Uh, that's not a problem. Patience is good, right? You show a lot yeah. of patience. Yeah. So you, you've been here for a while. Uh, you've heard the premise. Um, so you can first start by telling me how you came across the channel, what motivated you to join, and then what you think about all of this. Would you be okay if we discuss that at the end of my call rather than the beginning? Would you, sure. would you, would you be okay if we do it a little different? Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's just jump into the topic. And I, and I promise you, there's a reason why I want to talk about how I found mm -hmm. the channel. So, But I think it's better at the end rather than the start. So, like you're talking about that God favors the gullible. I saw how you're trying to explain what the gullible is. Emma did make, like the previous caller, did make a really good point. That you could see that children are naturally gullible. Because us as human beings, we we tend to not like expect people to deceive us or to lie to us. Even as a young child, everything is just handed to us on a platter and it's supposed to be the truth. And as people are being deceived, at that point, people start to put little brick walls around themselves to block away this negative energy and this negative lies that they've been deceived before because people don't like the feeling of being lied to. They don't like the feeling of being deceived. So that's why like you tend to see the people who didn't go through like the act of deception themselves nor accepting a lot of deceptions tend to be is what you call gullible. But in reality, it's innocent. So there's some people as well with an innocent heart right? That do like wrong things and they might go down the wrong path as they grow up. But then they go back to understanding that their heart doesn't represent that uh, cold mentality because they themselves don't accept that heart to them, like hurt about themselves. Now, one further point, uh, like I think you're confusing maybe gullibility with uh, humble and humility. So uh, you gave the example of those WhatsApp people, right? So the WhatsApp people is they're they're not educated. They're ignorant to the facts that you're talking about, but they accept it as laws just because that's what they saw their parents do, right? And that's how life sometimes is. That's what my parents said. I can't say no because then I look like a like I look like um there's something wrong with me. Like you know, in Arabic, it's like I, there's there's something that's wrong with me. And so the person that actually is a strong believer that is willing to have some skepticism on what is being given to them. Because to them, it's about the ultimate truth rather than the indoctrination or following tradition. Uh, so God in the Quran says that the people who are very close to God, God has given them wisdom and knowledge. So the knowledge, you have knowledge. A lot of people have knowledge, but you, you're obviously knowledgeable. But I feel like you lack the wisdom. Wherein, how do I apply this knowledge or which part of the, and I don't mean this as an insult. But like, I don't like, like, where do I apply to knowledge? In what settings do I apply the knowledge? And which mentality or verses does that fit in the situation that I'm looking at? I'll give you an example. So something bad happens, something evil happens. You could say, oh, that's God, right? Because God is in control of everything. Therefore, God allowed it or this is God's direct action. But the wisdom says that, you know what? No, God said that the results of a certain action is X. But if you took that action, then you got the result that got already programmed. But you yourself is the one who made that decision. So that's where I want to start with. Wait, that. but that's, um, I, I want to comment on something here. So you had mentioned how gullibility may be innocence. And that may be true. Uh, so I'm not really going to say much about that. But also, you said it might be humility. And I don't exactly agree with that. Because someone can be very gullible, yet very stubborn and arrogant and not you know, there's no humbleness there. So I don't think humility and gullibility are the same thing. Okay, so um, question, what's the difference between gullibility and naivety? So if someone's naive, but it doesn't necessarily mean he's gullible. 
So yes, he's stubborn about his part, but he's very naive to certain topics because of lack of uh, lack of understanding, right? So yeah, naive would be lack of uh, experience. Gullible would be easy to sway or easy to convince or deceive. So what's um, the difference? Because what's the difference? If you're naive, I'm easy, you're easily swayed. Someone could have a lot of experience and still be not learn from that or not have the retention uh, of, of learning from that pattern and still be easily swayed. Like there are people, for example, who are, this is a form of gullibility. Someone can be very prone to get rich quick schemes or um, gambling or something because every time they think, no, no, this is a different scheme. This is my chance to get rich. They're very gullible, even though maybe even na naive, but they've had yeah. the experience. They just don't build on it. And then it just becomes gullibility. So I'm not sure exactly what the distinction is, is, is in every example, but um, it, it, are you using the distinction to make a claim about something? Right. So for me, when I'm saying humility is the fact that if something I'm skeptical about, even if it comes to religion, if there's a topic that I understand, um, like I have enough humility to accept the fact that, A, maybe this topic I will not grasp or this topic... I cannot understand at this certain time. It doesn't mean that I would push it away as if it's either incorrect or in, inconclusive. It's just due to my own personal limitation. That's what I chalk up as humility, right? So now, how is that touch, touch with uh, humbleness is that a lot of people that are arrogant and stubborn is that they're not willing to have their own, uh, like have a skepticism in regards to what they're accepting because they don't have that humility to, to see that, you know what, I don't have a, the ability, nor the experience, nor the knowledge to grasp what's holding on. But when it comes to stuff with religion, just because I don't have that, I need to just keep going along the road in this darkness and hoping for either a light to tell me what happened, or that's a topic that's not personally for me, but there's a different path that's for me. So for example, like, I, Wait, I, I, I do have to comment on that, though. Sure. Um, Sorry, I might speak too much, so just cut me off whenever you want. That's all right. Um, I feel like what you're trying to imply here is that humility is giving an infinite amount of benefit of the doubt to any claims that are Islamic or religious. And arrogance is saying, I've tried to think about this. I've, tried, I've asked people who thought about this. It's not just me coming from my experiences and thinking, I can't understand it, therefore it's wrong. But based on all the things that are pointing to it, I don't see a way that anyone from all the explanations can make sense of it, aside from falling back on giving an infinite amount of cutting, an infinite amount of slack and saying, God knows how to make the paradox make sense. So I don't agree with the characterization that it's humble as long as you don't challenge the obviously problematic belief, uh, problematic in the sense that it doesn't add up. And it's arrogant to say, I've reached a conclusion that this doesn't add up because it doesn't add up. But like, arrogance works in both ways. So arrogance, you're correct. You're talking about one side of arrogance, but there's the other side of arrogance where I know it doesn't add up. I know it. there is a, a flaw in the thinking. I could see the flaw, but I'm going to act like it doesn't exist or I'm going to uh, kind of like uh, talk it away. So obviously when you're believing something, the core principles of what you're believing, the actual core understanding of the religion, it needs to make sense to you. Because if again, obviously my name is Muhammad, I'm a Muslim, uh, I'm a submitter, but like how many times have God said, do you not understand? He used that term more than which is do you not believe? So it's like you have to, God is making like aware that you need to Right, but actually the way that, that it's used in the Quran often comes after very like arguments that aren't actually coherent or use, usable in a debate. Well, and but then God would say, the Yes, one. they are, because I'm I'm using those arguments towards you. That's 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 this is the beauty of the Quran. So that, like, and again, I understand your position. So, God is when He's revealing certain verses in the Quran. It's a way of thinking, and it's a very simplified thought that can be applied to many things. So I'll give you an example. Go to a scientific theorem. A person makes a theory, like, Hey, I think that electrons act in a certain way, and this is where my proof is. And just because of how the Quran tells us human nature is, it's the exact same thing that's going to happen to this person, where there's some people that are going to agree with them and believe what they're going to say. 
And this is how they're going to act towards it. There's people that are going to oppose them because they are very ignorant to the topic and it and it and it uh shakes. Wait, are you talking belief. about like some people will believe Muhammad, some people won't? Right. But okay, so that's on the ultimate topic of understanding what a human being is and the role of a human being. But that kind of uh like that kind of interpersonal relationship that you have with people due to your position is going to be applied to every field. So the Quran is a law book. Like, let me let me state my position. Maybe this will help you. I think you have a problem with Sunnism. And it's very, it's very understandable why a lot of people have problems with Sunni. But if you if you dead, like you detach the cult and their the cult in certain traditions that have absolutely nothing to do with the human, like you know, the the actual universal religion of what submission is, then you could see that, like you know, the Quran is actually uh, talking more against what Sunnis do rather than for them. I'm not putting them down; they're still my brothers because they believe in the book, but their their uh, their application is incorrect. And you could prove I could prove that just because of the human history. You got the Jews that come; Jews have started. Wait, to add we're getting a little bit off topic here, though. Yada, yada, yada. So well, it's the I, same thing I, with the Muslims. They add a I, I have to bring us back. I do agree with you. Like I, I see a lot of problems with Sunni Islam, but I see a lot of problems with the Quran and Islam in general that are beyond Sunni Islam. But I focus on Sunni Islam because that's the one that I know, that's and that's the one that's most popular. Correct. Um, that's the one that, like, that the most amount of people who relate to what I'm saying can can understand me. Um, because that's all they knew. Because that's that's the whole problem with the with, with why you believe people are gullible. Because people don't look. You took the actual uh, like brain power and the time to think about what you were being told. There's there might have been certain events that blocked you from either accepting certain harsh truth and or maybe just things that you couldn't connect. That's who you are. But most well, of the here's people, here's something that I want to ask you then. Like before bringing it back to to the topic here of gullibility, do you think that someone can hear the arguments for Islam, read the Quran, do all the things that they're supposed to do to be a believer and arrive at the conclusion that this stuff doesn't add up? Okay, so I believe that based on the person's already input. So whatever, so let me put it this example. God said that if you put these ingredients in a pot, you're going to get apple pie, right? You can't put different ingredients and expect uh, apple pie. Right. So God's will is that you need to put these ingredients to have your apple pie. Now, if someone already started putting ingredients inside their input, the, the choices that they were making is stuff that would take them away from understanding the ultimate truth. Then at that point, they already made that recipe and they already started taking that tread into disbelief, into just denying that. So that could... like, to clarify, you're saying that something got in, in, in the mix and. The, in, in, in simpler terms, it. no, someone cannot have all the correct ingredients and not believe in Islam. So something tainted their understanding. Because us as a human, so I'll take you the example from the stealing. So, uh, you yeah, like, it, but you here's God to tell you stealing is bad or killing is bad. Us as humans, we're able to deduce that. Because me, when no, I, I, I want to focus on, on this part for, for a second that people can hear the arguments that the islam gives them and i'm not talking about you know fallacious arguments or hearing it from an angry sheikh or whatever getting That's all the arguments the as pure as like good as 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 legible as you can make them and they are not convinced there has to be some impurity there it's not because they're just not convinced there, there is impurity yes so to them to them it's 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 not about convincing there is no convincing it's i can't convince you and the only thing that can convince you is yourself. It's it's like going to a classroom and right, and, and this yourself lesson. part of it, like that's that's where the tainting is coming in, is what you're saying. Right. So, so any do you take that approach to anything else in life? Where if they don't agree with you, it's because there's a problem with them and not because of your position. Well, okay. So if the person didn't agree with me and he gave me certain evidences where I felt like I need to go and search. Right. At that point, I give them the benefit of the doubt that I didn't provide the best example, nor did I provide the best explanation to what they might be going through. But if I felt like I did a sufficient job and where the person was just. That is just beyond their current ability at that time to nor is it part of their interest. Maybe they're not interested in that topic. Then at that point, I did my part and it's for them not to understand it. It's like, you know, it's like the class clown in your school. Yes, he has the ability to understand the material. 
he can sit there and try to like think about it. But if you don't think about it, then you're not going to understand. It. But you have, it's, it's a very, you have a tool um, to do so. And it, it's a very poor to, example to use, to be honest, like because I know you didn't in, intend it to be that way, but you're still kind of not getting the point here. So you, you think that anyone who disagrees with your conclusion they're doing something wrong. There's some impurity there. It cannot be that they've actually assessed it and they're not convinced. That's not no. a possibility. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, yes, they assessed it. They not being convinced is they made a wrong choice. They made a wrong decision. So they assess the information, their style of assessing, the way, the logic, the processing. However, they've been taking that information. There's a flaw there. Even, well, do, even do you if, think they, they could honestly arrive at the wrong conclusion in that yeah. assessment? Yes, yes, they can arrive at the wrong conclusion, but that's just because due to who they are. Right, and, and due and to who they are, exactly do you think right. that makes it worthy of their fate in hell? Okay, so now here's the thing. When it comes to fate in hell, let me let me ask you a question. Let's just hypothetically, and I, I already saw how you answered the question. You, you put it back on God that it was, but if you die and then you see the hell in front of you, do you do you witness upon yourself that you 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 made these decisions actively that you know what you could be wrong but you chose to go on to the fact that you're more likely right than wrong when it came to the Quran and it came to the other books of God or the existence of God just let's just talk about existence of God rather than the Quran does that mean no sense? no we have to be specific here it's not just about the existence of God it's about the Islamic narrative. Well, well, actually, the Islamic narrative is very simple. It's you have to believe in God and you have to believe that you're going to be responsible for every action that you did. So if your actions... No, it's, are, it's, it's more than that. There's five pillars. Uh, if, if you no, want no, to be that's, uh, that's, that's Sunnism. That's Sunnism. And, and here's a pro point. So it's like someone who's never been introduced to the Quran, nor did he like understand... We're the, not talking about someone who's never been introduced because I'm, I'm kind of tired of that example of someone who's never heard of Islam. No, I'm, I'm saying someone could assess all the arguments that are put forth for Allah's existence, not proofs, but arguments, and not be convinced of it and you think that that's because of a mistake they made, but or, or who they are, as you put it. Yes. Do you think that that then makes them a person who is worthy of God's wrath? Well, that person himself is deluded. Yeah, well, he's oppressive. He oppressed the biggest thing. God is not waiting for you to believe in him. But you gave an example. He kind of is, like based on the religious narrative. No, 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 because of who you are. So let me put it this way. So God is like free of you. But you yourself, if you have a child, right, you expect your child to like... Be the child to. analogy never works. The child analogy is very, very no, different. No, let me finish it. You're, you're jumping the gun. Mm -hmm. I'm giving it to you in a different way. I'm not saying that God is your dad. and No, I'm saying you, you yourself. You wouldn't accept it to yourself if your own child is, is either like uh, acting arrogantly towards you or doesn't believe in you or hates you. That, that, that's you not the same. That's the wrong analogy. Them. That's the wrong analogy. If I gave my child all like puzzles and, and like signs of what but I want him to I'm believe. Saying. You're going into something else. I'm not comparing God to a dad. That's not, this is where you're not listening. I'm saying something you are, different. Because you're talking about arrogance and like disobedience and all that kind of stuff. No, because I'm saying that if you can't accept it to yourself, right? So judge yourself for what you want others to treat you with. You want someone, if you created something, you personally, as a human being, you want it to be uh, like aware of you. So because you naturally have that, God's going to judge you by that. Like it's the same thing as credit. I, I'm, I'm, we're, we're getting a little obfuscated here. Going back to, again, someone who d isn't convinced by these arguments for Allah, you're saying that that's because of who they, if they assessed God. everything honestly, that that's because of who they are. Yeah. So what is it, what is it that quality about who they are that makes them not believe this evidence that is Put, or arguments that are put forth like okay. is it not possible that someone could uh, disagree with you from an honest position not because of who they are well uh, like you're you even disagreeing from an honest position it's because of who you are it's your logic your way of processing information and coming to conclusions right right and that's, is, that's is that way and worth decision. torturing over what's that is, is that who i am is is that person is that alone, like I'm not talking about good deeds, bad deeds, that part of it, that disbelief part of it, because of not being convinced, because of who I am, as you put it, does that make the person worthy of torture? Again, it's it's the worthy of torture part 
that's not something up for me to, to, to say if it's worth or not. But if you do end up going to hell, you're going to have enough evidence and proof presented to you of things that happen into your life where you yourself say, I'm worthy of hell. God isn't oppressive or unjust. So it's like, uh, let me put it this way. You woke up at seven o'clock because of your alarm clock, right? Uh, if you like said that I'm going to sleep extra 10 minutes and then you show up to late uh, to work late for 10 minutes, right? You woke up at seven, you had enough time, you had everything. And then you just kind of like was lazy. It's the same thing. God gave you the exact enough information that you require for you to find a way, right? But, but, but you're so then you're saying more. anyone who's not convinced is lazy. No, I, I'm giving you an example on how like God is giving you the enough amount of information for you to get guided, but you actively choosing to confuse yourself. That's the so. But 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 here's here's what I'm saying here. Like, are you saying that someone like myself, for example, sees all the facts? yet rejects the truth of Islam, knowing that it is true. Okay, but you see, I don't think maybe God will not, like, let me, if I'm going to talk personally, and this is this is more on God than me, but like, let's just put the aside that, okay, you were deluded on certain topics, you didn't have the ability, nor did you have, like, wholeheartedly didn't understand why certain things were, and you chose not to believe. But then it's your actions. Wait, that is there a choice that. there? What? Is there a choice choosing not to believe? Or yes, yes, 100% I, you have a choice. You have 100%. So if someone's not convinced, they're choosing to disbelieve in you rather than they're not convinced. Okay, but you not being convinced is the choice. So there's other people that are being convinced and, and their, the style of convincing isn't faith. It's but more that's not an active choice. Like it if you give choice. me an argument and it's not convincing to me, I'm not choosing to disbelieve you despite your argument being convincing. But, but It's here's not the, a convincing argument. Here's the thing. So I'm... I myself, as I'm a very devout believer and I'm a very strong believer, I hope, right? But I can today stop believing. I can make that active choice of, you know what, like whether he exists or doesn't exist, I'm going to take this path. And I know this path is wrong, but I can act. You can believe. act as if he doesn't, but can you believe that he doesn't? It's impossible for me not to believe that he doesn't. I have enough, uh, I have enough proof that he does. Right, and someone could see it the other way around that I haven't, I don't have enough proof to believe that he does. Correct. It's impossible that, for me to believe that he does. And at that point, now the thing that uh, will separate us that is death. That's the only way we can settle this argument. I, I am, I, I am, I am with you that in a sense that due to there is this difference, and we are we can't really uh, reconcile this difference. We still have to live in peace. Because that's our natural inclination as human beings. We don't like stealing. We don't like killing. We don't like yada, yada, yada. So we should find as much peaceful common ground as humanity, as humans, and live there. Because whatever the religion is preaching, uh, not on the state affair of things, but just on a personal level, there isn't someone who's either secular, religious, or non-religious can argue against it. Okay, don't steal. Don't kill. Uh, be nice to your neighbor. Be the So the human values of religion is applicable to everyone. And that's the only way you get forward in life. Nobody wants to deal with a liar. Nobody wants to deal with a cheat. Nobody wants to read. Like you yourself have the traits of like, uh, like, so I'm going to say it. You like know, religion. Christians say that too. Yeah, you that have those You're traits. acting and Christ-like. This is but... why people uh, get attracted. Uh, I mean, what's the term? Like It's like uh, people get attracted to you or like they levitate towards you and talk to you because you're a... But, but don't you see that it could be the other way around? That if someone... Like say Muhammad was a very well-mannered person and like or a preacher, let's just use a preacher, is a very well-mannered person and people like him, then they're likely to believe what he's saying. It's not that because it's his Muslimness or adherence to Islam that makes him a good person that people like him. It's like Christians also say the same thing. They would tell me you embody like you have very Christ-like values. Uh, there's a Christian in you somewhere. But that's just projecting what you think is a good person, what a good Christian looks like, what a good no, Muslim looks like. No, no, no. You can't say that I'm projecting it because you yourself is living it. So in your own personal idea of what a good person is, is how you're acting and handling yourself. So no, but we're selecting specific agree. things in Islam that that I agree with, that I behave as if like don't kill, don't steal, be honest, that kind of stuff. Right. Um, that's different than there are a lot of things that morally um, don't see eye to eye with Islam 
with. the only morals that you don't have eye to eye is understanding why God did certain things. That's that's where I see our differences is. And yes, you have certain no, issues. There's with more hadith, to it. But it's questionable hadith. I know that you have question like uh, your doubts there. But when it comes to the Quran, specifically the Quran, your your core issue is you're thinking God is oppressive. You're thinking that God hasn't given the proper chance to everyone else. But like, and, um, and God is not making a solid, coherent argument for Himself. And God should be like, why is this about? I think I think um, I put a lot more weight on convincing, and that I believe people can be honest and convinced of something else, even though you give them all the correct information, and that doesn't make them a bad person. But no. there's no room for that in Islam. There, there is, there is. There's no room in Sunniism. In Islam, there is that room. There is that room where, uh, like, like God is judging you for literally who you are. It's not. It's there isn't like one standard, or how can I say? There isn't a single standard that everyone's going to get compared to. No, it's your personal. Well, the one criteria right? is belief, aside from everything else. Right, but that's the biggest oppression at that point. Self oppression. And the fact that but, like, here's the thing, just calling it like self oppression that deserves punishment doesn't absolve it from it not really making sense that someone would be punished for not being convinced by bad arguments. You're not being convinced that the fact that maybe the Islam way of life isn't no, not maybe, not maybe. Because if, if we want to say maybe, then maybe Christianity, maybe Islam, maybe whoever else comes and comes up with a theory about how things came to be. But oh, yeah. is there something yeah. very convincing about Islam? Very, very convincing that I can't. I'm not saying see. the fact that you're denying a higher power. Islam existed before, like submission and the understanding of submission existed before Prophet Muhammad. That's like even before the human being submission existed. Like this pen is a Muslim, technically. So this pen is under the direct, like. Uh, rule of God in a sense that this is how you're going to act with gravity. This is what that's you can an do. interesting, you do. Un, unprovable, uh, disprove. Like you can't disprove it. No, no, you no. Can't it's subjugated it. to the laws that's around it. That's that's truth. That's truthfully what Islam is. That submission is. It's everything around you is subjugated to that law. You as a human being, there's this natural law that's within you that you have to subjugate yourself to, which is try to cause as good as as much as good to yourself and around you. That's the truth. But you have a common enemy. Me and you have a common enemy. Is the one that tries to separate people and to put falsehood. As you said, people are gullible. People like us as human That's beings. That's not exactly what I what I had said about like people are gullible. I'm saying a gullible person in a religious environment is by the system that Allah had put in place is more likely to go to heaven than a gullible person in a non-Muslim environment or than a skeptical person in a Muslim environment. Not 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 everybody that believes in God in the last day. Uh, and not everyone that says is a Muslim is ending up in heaven. Right, but they have a better shot at it than someone who's gullible and you know ends up believing in Hinduism or no Islam or whatever it may be. No, so you know, there's here, a lot of like Christians they're being rewarded for their gullibility. Days. There's a lot of Christians and Jews and Sikhs and monotheistic people that are going to heaven in nowadays. Or whatever other like right. not not just the Abrahamic religions. Right, they're but, gullible. They're swayed by whatever you know is is around them, and they may believe it very strongly, but they got into it because they're gullible, just like someone got into it possibly because they're gullible in Islam. So the gullible person, depending on the chance of where he was born, either his gullibility would lead him to heaven or lead him to hell. Uh, I don't I don't agree with you there because if someone is someone who, how can I say this? Like if you are a good, truthfully good person and you want truthfully good for the world, I think you will be judged for that. And in your route, right? God will give you the support in what you need to find a way to land you so that you can live forever to keep spreading that good that you're doing. So it's innately there's something inside you that's blocking you. Whether so if someone dies not a Muslim, right, and and not someone who's never heard of Islam and all that, someone again, came across Islam in many ways and all that, but dies not a Muslim, did God not give them these clues along the way? Or like what's what's their judgment here? They did get closer on, along the way, and I need to understand what you meant by Muslim. So, does he believe in God or not, or does it does he have to adhere to following Prophet Muhammad, like that form of Islam? Because that's just one form of Islam, and currently the best form of Islam. But as I said, Islam existed before, so and it's the most generic form of Islam that you think would qualify them to maybe go to heaven and maybe avoid hell. Okay, so we can talk about how Abraham went into Islam or submission. Is like he God said to him, submit. 
Like, here's the proof that I exist. And Abraham said, I submit to the Lord of the world. Right. He actually showed him, according to the stories, actually did miracles to show him proof. But no. we're supposed to believe. No, no, that's not true. Abraham did it from logic. So Abraham logically deduced that God exists and that he cannot see God. Because he's seen the star and he said, that's my Lord. And then the star disappeared. And he said, I don't like, my Lord cannot disappear. It doesn't make sense. My God, my God shouldn't be leaving me. And then he's seen the moon. He said, okay, so that's my moon. Uh, that's my God. Like it, it's brighter and then that disappeared. And then he goes, the sun is God because it's bigger. And then it disappeared. And then he right, realized none of that, that proves Allah. Like all of this is pointing to things that aren't God. Right. But that's that's the whole process that you understand from Abraham is he's talking about dominance. So for him, he went through the scale of what's more dominant in his view from what he's taking as data. And then he realized well, that there's something. Abraham didn't even understand that, like based on this story. He doesn't seem to understand what a star is, what the sun is, that the sun is just a closer star than the far away stars. That's it's a very simplistic view of looking at what's big. You know, that's the idea of dominance. Yes. This is it not is. really about, but, but size is not like, it, it, it's a very simplistic way of looking at it. Like bigger, bigger must be God, bigger must be God. But none of this actually coherently points to this proves that Islam is true. No, the, the thing that, in her, so you're actually taking the conversation away from Abraham. What I'm saying that the thing that you, Abraham used as a tool to deduce that God exists was the fact that there's dominance. So he tried to come up with a concept of what is the most dominant? What kind of idea can I come up with? That but the, the sun dominant? and the moon don't have dominance over stars. That's Damn. a bad idea. The, the dominance is in size here. That's all it is. It's dominance. In they size. don't even have dominance in size. That And that's a very interesting point. The perspective makes it seem like the sun yes. is huge. A lot of these stars are way bigger. But uh, that, 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 that goes back to what you were saying. Is God is But he lacked perspective. One second. God is judging you for what you know, right? It's not about what the actual like size of the star versus the sun here. Because God knows there's no way for Abraham to understand that at that point. God is judging him for whatever knowledge Abraham is deducing at this point. We now, currently in this day and age, know that their star is bigger than the sun. But we they, they couldn't deduce that, nor did they know that. So why would God judge him on that? God judged him in a peaceful manner to what Abraham was being able to see. But let's just apply to why he's saying Islam is true. To me, Islam is true is because God created me in a certain way that I have to submit that this is the way. I don't like it when people steal from me, so I'm not going to steal, okay? I don't like it when... Wait, uh, wait so sorry, now, can, you, can you repeat that? You're saying Islam is true because God created you in a certain way that you don't like it when people steal. No, God created me in a certain way that I need to submit to. So the things that I don't like done to me, right, and others don't like done to, I shouldn't be doing. And the things that wait, I what, like... What does like, doing things good in, in society have to do with submission and like God, so you're saying you you know Islam is true because God created you. That's already like no, no. I, I know Islam is true because I have to submit to a way that makes me beneficial, use useful. Because I've but, lived. But a life how does that, that prove I Islam in useful. general? Like that you have to submit to a certain way that's beneficial for you. Right. I could say that about anything and everything else. But that's that's exactly it. So we're we're on the same page. You could say that that we do need to submit to a way. So I found the most. No, I'm saying way. I could make the argument that I need to submit to something else, or I don't need to submit to like I don't have that inclination to submit. Neither of my position or yours says anything about the truthfulness of Islam. But then whether you need to submit to something or not. Well, no, no, no. You see, I understand what you're telling me, but I think you're. Um, so for me, the point of submission. As I said, is for me realizing that the world around me needs a certain input for me to get the most positive output, right? I need to put the right ingredients. So the, the book, the Quran is telling me the correct ingredients that I need to put for my best output. That's that's why I find the truth in it. It's like a certain way and a certain thinking and a certain mentality where I'm able to A, withstand a lot, uh, deal with a lot of people and and peace the world that's going on around me without having too much of a stress in my mind. So, so it's, it's, here's, uh, I'll use the same method, right? Please. Um, if I find something that I use to better relate to the world around me, to, to endure things, to, uh, in, you know, put it input, get output, all this stuff, does that prove that that method is divine? Okay, so when it comes to if that method is divine, you naturally have to do the 
trial and error when with the input and output of whatever you're doing in your life. So if, right, I'm, I'm asking, is that method like, how do I arrive at the, 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 the Islam is true? And you're saying for you, things worked in a certain way that you found it to work better for you. And if I found something else to work better, does that prove that my thing is true or that Islam is not true? Well, you you got to have to present it to me. So to me, it's whatever. No, it, without it, presenting it to you, like your method itself if is you that find me it's a better working method, out for you. In it. If, if you could find me a method, better method of how I could understand the world uh, around me. And again, as I said, I'm a person that believes that I have a creator. And no, I'm but you're looking for a method with a title, with a name, like you're no, looking no, not for... not a title and a name. I'm, I'm looking for a documented method. So a documented method in a sense where here's a book, here's what you, here's how you should act. That's all I'm looking for. But so, remember, so the I'm truth of it is that it's a book that already is documented and tells you how to act and works out for you. And therefore that proves that Islam is true. That proves that that book is true. It's like a self-help book. If that self-help book is giving me a positive feedback, and me understanding the world, and I can see it, how it's fitting in the world, then yes, I'm going to follow that book. So if I find a good self-help book and it works for me and I follow it, is that the same method as believing it, that this book is good, therefore it must be divine? No, because the divinity part is this book is claiming that it's divine. So if the book, if the self-help book told me that it's divine and it's helpful to me, then it, it's divine? I'm telling I'm telling you I'm telling you the difference between just having a self-help book and then having a book from God. So yes, a self-help book can give you the instructions and the requirements you can to get through life, but the thing that makes a divinity is it claiming it from being from God. And then if it is from God, it needs to be uh like like in contradiction. To me when you're talking about Okay, prophets, that's uh, but, but before we get to that point about uh and kathira, um if your method for determining if Islam is true is that the book is very helpful to you and it claims that it's true. Right. But don't you see how this is not a, like, that's not how you prove a religion, that it works for you and it so claims it's true? You, you, the word religion in Arabic, deen, is law. Like, the, the law is the, your limitations. Because I'm putting these limitations that I read off this book on myself... I'm having a very easy life. I'm very. I'm having a very positive life. I'm and I talking about whether this life. is from God or not, right? Yes. Like if just your method is it works for me and it's a rule book and it's it's a limitation book and it works for me and it says it's from God. Is that yes, a method but, we but can use to assess itself. other books? It's proven itself is just because there's certain things that when you start to practice, you could see the truth in it. So take the example for meditation, prayer, right? So God says that prayer will... Uh, stop you from doing certain actions and, and it will block you from certain things and it's very true people that are not even religious right that do pray and meditate they find themselves having a little bit more control self-control okay so let's focus on that point then then so then i'm trying to formulate this like why islam is true it's a book that has limitations and laws that works for you and does make your life better you can see that and it points to things like meditation that makes your life better and the divine part is that it says it's divine. But it's it's not just saying I'm divine. It's explaining it's divinity. So it's giving Yeah, so me... we're still not arriving at the proof that it's divine. No, no, I'm 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 telling you. So it's proving it's divinity in a sense on how it explains God to you. So us as people living in the 21st century, our understanding of infinity and our understanding of the universe is much bigger. And that still fits on how an infinite being is being displayed in the Quran. That's there are many ways I can point that it doesn't fit, but every time I would point that it doesn't fit, you would say, no, it does because so and so. No, Is there I'm a way that we can like get our opinions thing. out of it and like see that it proves Islam? But like, I don't, I don't think it's in my position or anyone's position to prove it to you. You're either proved by it or like you either find a proof or you don't. That's not on me. That's that's definitely not on me. That's but but that's what I'm saying. If if you claim that it's self-evident and it's like it's it's there and you have to look for it, what am I looking for? Like it has to be more clear cut than that. We can't just say it's a journey and like you figure it out. It's not a journey. It's very binary, actually. Like to me, the Quran is very binary with a scale. In the so middle. what is the binary proof then? The binary proof is like okay, so you have to show loyalty. The more loyalty to you show to your Creator, the more you're gonna find your life being. Uh, like the word Arabic word is salis. It's like more like easier, and you avoid certain certain habits and certain things that you didn't do before. 
But th that sounds very, very similar to like manifestation. Like if a self-help book were to say, if you live and embody this method and think of this and it'll happen to you. But okay, so- How is that binary proof? The, the binary proof is on how you're supposed to be acting. So it's God doesn't talk about like disbelievers and believers and then the people in the middle. No, there's disbelievers and there's believers. Where do you sit on the scale? And, and but that's me, not proof. That's a binary position on belief, which is also a problem. Like belief is not just believers and disbelievers, but as I said, you fit on a scale. So you're missing the point where I'm talking about fitting on a scale. So there, there's only two states. There isn't more than that. And everything around you is sitting in two states. Like I, I'm finding the Quran in everything that I do. I just find a verse that is being applicable to what I'm, I'm doing and what I'm seeing and what I'm understanding. There's a verse that supports me. The fact that it's covering every topic that I can touch proves to me that it's a simplified law book that applies to all the universe, not just humanity. It's just on how, as a human, I'm supposed to be acting. So as God said in the Quran, God created the human and the jinn to serve him, to work, right? So working, as like Christians say, we're doing God's work. That's what I am here. I'm just a small entity from this bigger hive mentality, which we call as God. And whatever whatever thoughts and actions that I'm getting to be told to do, I do them. And this is me serving God. So it's like I'm walking well, the street. I, I like that you said it's it's proofs to me, like doing this proofs to me that I can fit it. You said I can see it fitting in many parts of my life. I'm not quoting. No, no, I'm saying the Quran, I can see it fitting in every part of. Right. So you can notice patterns and make them fit and that proves to you that right. islam is true That's because so you can point. see it fitting in parts of your life okay you see you're taking it from a personal level i'm telling you i'm telling yes you. i i don't want it from a personal level i want it from a generic level what is a formula that one can follow to find binary proof in this that's not just that it, it fits well and it makes me feel good because that can apply to other religions as well right and it, it should but the more proof or the more uh, pieces you feel or more pieces you see fit in the world makes it better than what came before or what's what's around it. So the fact that you can do this with some of the stuff that the Christians uh, have in the gospel and some of the stuff that they have in the Torah and what they what the Sikhs have as well in uh, in India. Yes, you can see a lot of the things they teach you fitting in how the universe is created around you. But I personally found that the Muslim narrative, the Quran narrative is the most fitting and i i personally i just feel that i'm not the only one who sees that people who actually looked into the code or not the code sorry people looked into the text but then you have but then we can point to people who have looked into it and not seen it that's what i'm saying but then you have the cut where it's like people like you who decided that you found inconsistencies and you found uh like inconsistencies and i believe you found what's the, what's the word contradictions uh while others didn't find that and i believe that's just because of how you interpreted things and, and and there's that applies to everything in life as well so i mean but there are actual inconsistencies about the number of days that allah describes he created the world and sometimes he says so. six sometimes it's more than six no he said and, six and then he said one but the word yom yom so the word yom, no, no not yom, yom there was a count where it was i think it was eight there was one of the times where it was eight. And the way that the ulama would go through it is they say, well, he counts a certain two days as two more days. Like there are inconsistencies, but every time you point it out to a believer, they say, well, let's change the meaning of the word. Okay, let's let's not go through that process because yes, that's usually the process is the fact that we might not seeing the word correctly or we might not be understanding the verse correctly. One but of you them. see how that's that's gaslighting? Like the numbers don't add up and then you tell the person, no, you just need to redo the numbers. You need to redefine the word. Uh, uh, I I personally haven't seen those verses in that way, and I, sure. nobody ever nobody ever presented to me to show me a numerical inconsistency in the Quran. The only time people talked about was six days versus one day, because there is a verse where he says uh, the day he created the the heavens and earth, and then there he created them in six days. There's the two verses, but the word yom means epoch. It doesn't mean like day. So just so that we're clear, and you know that that's not something that's. Uh, like I, I feel like well, what what I find interesting about the description of the word yom as as a, a a unit of time or an epoch is what what do we gain to benefit from God saying I created the world in X units not yeah. knowing how long a unit is and because he, now like back then they understood it as a day right as a day like a circular motion of um um like the um the, the, the sun's rotation and the Earth's rotation and so on and now that we see oh, it took a lot longer for the earth to form. 
now it's a unit that could mean thousands of years so that it can fit the scientific observation of how long it took. So, so we, what's we the point of God telling us day. an epoch? We, we translate it as day, but in reality, yom means day and night. Right? So let's just, that's more technicalities. Yeah, but, but I mean, like, what's the point of God giving us this information if it doesn't even relate to the day that we're familiar with? Uh, the fact that God is telling us that patterns and cycles exist. And, and let's take it to the biggest picture. So let's just say we're on one really big epoch now where us getting born and dying and this epoch, and when this epoch is going to get restarted, this is when we're going to come back to life. So because everything around us is in a big cycle or a small cycle or works in cycles in the same pattern. So God is revealing to us that like there's a major big epoch where you're all going to live and then it's very easy to bring you back again because I've done it before so many times around you. That's that's a mentality that I understand why God is talking about these certain epochs. Well, I don't want to push back on that one point too far because I want to bring it back to the gullibility point here. So what I'm trying to convey with, with the topic today is that you can be a person who, like, gullibility is not a virtue. It's not something good necessarily to have. Maybe one could argue it's, it's not a bad mistake of a person, but it's not necessarily a good thing. And because of gullibility, you may be led easily into religion in a way that a skeptical person would have a lot more resistance and maybe not believe because the way that you, the way that you describe why Islam is true you know the way that it personally affects you the way that it claims to be divine i wouldn't apply this standard of proof to anything aside from religion and think that they have a point so why is it that i'm supposed to have blind faith here and that a person with blind faith or gullibility or both would be rewarded but skepticism makes you run into obstacles skepticism is doubt skepticism if that sense of doubt can cause you problems so at what point, even as a believer, at what point do I am I content that I have enough knowledge now to, to live my life without having to pursue anything more? At what point am I content and satisfied with what I know? So there is that there is that issue there, which is it's more of an ethical and, and, and you know it's like a personal issue to people, right? But also uh, at the same time, sorry, I had a, a, another point on that, and I um. Um, so no, but even when it comes to science, to me, I, I go back to the same religion thing. So it's like when I'm like, God is truth. God is the truth. So if I drop the pen and it falls and I repeat that a hundred times, that's God's words. God said that if a pen is at this height and it falls, gravity is 9.8 meters squared in the six days that God created that. He mentioned that. And me discovering that is. He didn't mention that. We, we discovered that. Yes, but that's what God put in his creation. God talked. God didn't like when he's creating, he taught. He mentioned everything that we're going to understand. So it's but like, these are all claims that God said and did those things. But that's because, how a programmer works or a God or a creator or, uh, or, or a logician. But that's still a claim. Like it, we're still saying claims on claims on claims that God did this, God did that. Like guess, you can't point to it as a sign and that, you know, say that gravity or like that this is repeatable is a sign of God because you claim that God did this. No, I'm saying that this is truth. And for me, any truth, I'm, I'm going back to answering your question. So because I could see that gravity is something that's repeatable and therefore there is truth within it. I'm saying that this truth came from God and therefore my understanding of how the Quran works and how Islam is true is being applied to everything around me. Any truth that is being presented to me is is that person or that book is being a medium of from God. It doesn't necessarily have to be just the so, Quran. So I any stimulus, it, any observation of anything, of including the repeatability of gravity, is proof of God. To me, yes. That, that's proof that it came from God. So breathing is proof, proof of God, God. That it came from God. So, so the system... How does it prove that it came from God? Well, to me, because I think... I keep saying to me... Which, you just have to go through the first stepping block, which I think that's not something that you're going to take in a, in a sense where understanding that there is a creator, that there is a programmer, that there is a logician. So to me, the God that created me is the God that created you. He's the one who's feeding me and feeding you and feeding everyone else. So yeah, I'm we, not going to take that step because nothing has shown that that step is a reasonable one to take. But let's say I'm with you that there is a singular creator, right? How do we get from there to Islam? Well, to me, if there is a, again, sorry, I keep saying to me, but um, 
the next no, the, it's, it's good because it highlights that you're looking at it from your point of view which is yeah. important uh, and i think about it a lot right so this is these are topics but but you so if if someone is coming to you with an open heart and completely honest it's very difficult to say this other than saying like you find the answers as soon as you wholeheartedly believe that he exists it's like imagine you know you have a wall next to you right let's say i'm behind that wall you can believe that i'm behind that wall and you can sense that i'm behind that wall right okay and that's how i believe how it is with god that he's there i just cannot fathom i can't see it. he's just behind this ceiling which we're calling the sky and i truly believe that he's there and because i have that belief i am being i, I do like certain times get thoughts that you know, that are very helpful that I couldn't have them on my thought, my own. I can understand the situation that happened in front of me that maybe I would change how what I was saying to a person or whatever action that I'm doing now. And I just believe it's all coming from God. Like even you sitting in front of me, that was by the permission of God. And it's all happening for me to, to act in a certain way. So it's like I have my free will and God is being that tolerance and support. And this is why I believe God is very merciful and forgiving because like as I said, I believe he's very binary, but he has that tolerance level where he's helping. I'm, I'm struggling to understand that still, that you're saying it's as if he's behind a wall and you know that he's there. Yeah. You sense him. You sense when you truly believe and you give into it. You, you, you so when him. you believe, you sense him. But how do you start believing For in me, him? N not just that there is the plausibility of a creator. Specifically, how do you believe in him? Right. But that's it. Like you see, you you're you to you. I don't I don't need that much evidence nor that proof that a creator exists. I don't for some reason that's not a mental block for me, which it is for you. So I can't have that. Uh, I, I try very hard to understand an atheist perspective on where is that issue on that there there is no creator. Okay. For me, everything else has been created. You need that's I think that's not the main issue, at least not for me. It's not the assertion that there is no creator, it's the assertion that we know things about that creator very confidently because oh. we feel them. Right. So is there a way to determine and like the method that you use to know that Allah exists? Can you use that method for anything else in life or just religion? Uh in regards to faith or in regards to how I act. So I use the same method with science and I use the same method with history. But but science and history are different. You can actually look up books like the, at some point you have to trust that but someone was honest while writing it down. But it's not the same go. as I feel that this paper is okay. scientifically accurate. But you said it. So somebody was being honest when they wrote it down. So when I'm reading a certain history book, you can. But, but like, wait, science and history are different. So if you want to take history. Why, why is science and history different? Science is repeatable. History is not repeatable in that same way. But science is the exploration of truth, and history is the exploration of truth as well. So nobody, nobody's going to learn a topic or take knowledge if it's falsehood. You, people who are honest are trying to put the truth down. So it doesn't matter. The no, th th this is, is getting a little obfuscated here. Like history, so I don't have faith in science the way that you have faith in God. I have faith that I have to believe at some point that someone else is doing their job in verifying these things, but the method that they use is not the same as your method of verifying. Well, so that's me, not the same kind of faith. Okay, so now take it a step backwards where you said that people have to do their jobs and you're relying that people are doing their jobs, therefore everything is running properly. For me, I have faith that God programmed the, wor the world in a certain way that if people don't do their job, this is the result. If people do their job, this is the result. So, but but at no point in your process is there any actual revision or experiments or yes, evidence? There yes, there is. Yes, there is. Because if I start being rude to you, right? Let's. This is from a human point of view. If I start being very rude to you and I start like cursing at you and, and, and shouting at you, the conversation ends. And I could repeat that a hundred times. I can go to everybody and just be a... a, a that has a, no bearing on whether God exists or not. It has, it has bearing on whatever I'm being told is the truth is the truth. It's, I'm being told, don't do that. It still doesn't. Yes, it does. It does, 100%. How, how is it me not? Me not being that? tolerant to rudeness doesn't have anything to do with the but truth. You, now you go, I give you an example, and then you simplify that the whole belief is on this single example. But there's multiple examples in the book that some, like as a, and as a summary, right, and as a summation, gives that whole proof. So just summarizing it to one example is not, is not fair on your end. 
it's not just how you act. It's how you act. It's how you think. It's how you handle situations. It's how it's how you're viewing the world, and it's your your faith in the hereafter. The hereafter is the most important for a human. Us your people, faith we, proves your faith. Sorry, what was that? Yeah, you're saying, and your faith in the hereafter, and all that, like all that proves religion. To me, yeah, because like I see. Uh, a lot of humans and a lot me myself we're susceptible to like not doing our part we're susceptible to like even as as despite as how hard we want to say that we try not to hurt uh, each other sometimes we're arrogant or ignorant to the fact that we just do it and sometimes knowingly we do it right so to me understanding and reminding myself constantly that there's a day of judgment i'm always reviewing my actions as much as i can so even coming onto your show and sitting like there's things that's like, you know what, like maybe he's taking too long to quit. But then this is when I start to review my actions. Like, you know what, on the day of judgment, God told me to be patient. And it's not nice because I gave him my word. If I break my word, he's going to feel bad. And, and then I'm going to be in trouble for that. So it's not good for me to do this. So I'll stay and be patient, even if it's not something I want to do. So those, those, and then on the other flip side is that, you know what, like nobody's helping this neighbor. Uh, if I help him, I'm going to feel better about myself and I should be helping him. It's not good that nobody's helping him. I'll go help him. And then at the on the day of judgment, I'm going to see and I'm going to remember those feelings because it, it'll be written down in my book. I can relive this event that I was there for this person when I needed to. And well, I, I, I got to tell you, like this way of thinking has gotten me in so much anxiety that I carry with me to this day that I'm okay. now trying to deconstruct that someone is you know, that someone's writing this down and I'm going to read it on the day of judgment and so on. It goes beyond me revising my own thoughts and actions. It, that feeling of someone looking over your shoulder all the time, it doesn't help. Like there's a productive amount of looking over your own thoughts, but it gets to a point where it's just very anxiety inducing. That's that's the problem with Sunnism. They paint God as a cop. So, and they paint that. But jury. it's the stuff that you just said as well. No, for me, I don't see it that way. For me, it's a motivation. It's I want to do good. I want to have a good record. I want to have these good books. I'm not scared of, it's not, for me, it's like, hey, am I failing? I'm like there. The only times I get scared is when I start like, you know, uh, like I get the idea, you know what? I shouldn't shout at the person or like, you know, that guy's pissing me off. I'm about to say something. And you say to your head, Jeez, I say it, a witness to myself. It's not a good idea. And then I do it. And then later when I'm revising, you know, when you're sleeping in your bed, it's like, you know what? I had the thought and I did it. I shouldn't have done it. I'm sorry, God. I didn't mean it that way. I, 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 you gave me the inclination not to shout at the person. I should have been uh, studied. Please, God, make me like, you know, more patient when it comes to those times and remind me the next time. So this is how I view my religion. It's not about like, hey, you like uh, went into the bathroom with the wrong foot. You're going to hell. No, you said this to this person. It's not that that whole like regurgitate uh, being a parrot and and having a certain style and a culture. That's not what religion is. Religion is universal. Anywhere I go into the world, the way I'm acting as a human being should be accepted anywhere I go in the universe. Anywhere I go in the universe. So, and the and here's my proof, like that the world answers back to you. The world does answer back to you because this submission, as I said, like me and this pen have submitted to the same creator. The creatures outside is the same thing. You'll see like even animals interact with you differently. The wind will interact with you differently. I know you're going to say it's perception and you could say that it may be just because of how you're thinking, but but you just feel like you're in place while a lot of people are out of place and a lot of people are heedless to what the world is showing you. Like, well, let, let me ask you this beauty. then. Like people say the same thing about Christianity yeah. Christian. or sometimes without a, even a religion, there's like ways of thinking about life that people have arrived at that be meditation, other stuff Aladdin. like that. You, 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 sorry, Allah, Allah is my right? Like you, uh, Allah Din, Allah Din. Allah Din, fine. Allah. I will just give you the nickname Allah. But yes, because they are doing parts that does get them closer to the truth. They will find parts of no that without even God. Like someone could have a, yeah. a, a diet and a meditative philosophy and stuff, and they would say the same exact things about how it makes them feel. Does it say anything about the truthfulness of of God? Yes, that that actually proves that it's true. The fact that it is... Even if God is not involved in the regime of, of actions and thoughts and stuff? It's the action. God is telling you to do this action. This is the result. So because we do this action, we're getting this result. And even though because someone else that doesn't believe in God is doing the same action is getting that same result, therefore... No, or, or different actions. Like there are ways that people relate to the world around them. Then they they explain, they, they describe the euphoria, the way that they sense the wind, everything 
like you're saying right. in a way that and their actions have nothing to do with god they're it's not even following rituals of islam or christianity so if they're just praying. by doing they're something medics. and making it feel you better like is feeling better confirm confirmation that it's divine that's just one of the factors that help yes and actually even when you're feeling bad when you're feeling bad uh and you're and usually this is when people's religion you uh like works over like uh how can i say it gets stressed and it works overload uh is in a bad situation so when things aren't going the way you want it to go how are you handling yourself and this is where islam shines it's like you know what uh, it's going to be a little bit stressful uh it's best to keep a calm mind it's best to keep calm in these situations whether you believe in god or not that is the actual proper uh action so it's like soldiers for example have that mentality people who are in emergency situations have that mentality but islam also teaches you that so like those little things that we find in all these disciplines on that makes a, a human a better human and how they could serve god or serve yeah serving god making the world a better place you find those concepts in the quran so that's the like the gist of why i love this religion and i follow it. i personally I didn't have doubts in God's existence. I think this is where it's different between you and me. But I had a lot of doubts in what I was being told as a kid. Because, yes, I'm, I'm not a liar. I could see that they have a lot of inconsistency. A lot of things they're preaching is is more so like a, you know, like a, a sword on top of your head. If you don't do this, 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 this. And the only way you're going to find religion is you listen to me and no one else. And if you don't listen to me, uh, like, you're in trouble. And and don't listen to I mean, that guy because he doesn't that's know. Still, like, that's not just Sunni Islam. That's, that's all Quran. Wrong. Yeah, but Quran is free of all that. That's what it's I. It's not though. The Quran is full of these verses that are that that just keep asserting. Don't you don't you see how it rains and then the trees come out and isn't that proof of Allah? Like, is that's such a bad argument? Actually, that's not a, that 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 argument is saying to you. The the argument yeah. the Quran isn't proving God. God, the Quran isn't talking about how God exists. That's that's something that's. But, like, but that's that's why God says, well, God is saying that hey, like I'm making the water come down on a barren land. Like in, imagine a planet, and we could see it now. Imagine a planet that's completely a rock. He could make. But it's um, not completely rock. That's like he was trying to impress them without, like no, we no, no, understand no. that there's dormant seeds in in that in that desert that he's that that the water is gonna make come to life so what's the point of this and god saying or the author saying okay. do you not think if it's not supposed to be proof of him look at the way that human i mean the earth was created using the big bang theory and the billion years the earth was completely barren and the thing that brought the life and the green on earth itself was storms so god is god is literally whatever that image is in the quran is being proved by science is that water had to come down on the surface that made the green. So he brought a barren earth that was completely a rock that was just floating in space alive. So he he was so now it's symbolic, but before that it was talking about specifically the, when but, it rains and then it, like it was talking don't you see to the yeah, people. The, the point isn't that God exists. That's the given. The point is that he made something dead come to alive. It's the life. So you being dead coming alive is easy for God. That's the whole warning. The warning is like all your actions uh, is you're going to be hit, like you're going to be looking at it. So as the whole like warning is everything you do in this life has a butterfly effect. Our conversation right now, you might think of it later. Maybe the people in the chat think of it uh, and it's just going to affect the world and how it is. And you want to make the best ripples you can in history. That's so, so you're it. saying like these verses weren't supposed to be proving Allah. Then. What is the point of the like? Does the Quran prove Allah? Well, the Quran is coming from the point of view where the person's listening already believe in God. So, how do you believe in God without the Quran with and Allah specifically, not just the idea of a creator? Believe in Allah without the Quran and then question. start. I can't answer the question because to me that's a given. Like it's, I. I how do you introduce that, that given to a to a non-believer? That's what I'm saying. Like to me, I just cannot understand the. I'm sorry. I swear to you, it's a mental block. It's not something I, I try mm -hmm. to show empathy. I try to understand the other person's perspective. I just cannot understand how someone cannot accept that a creator is a creator created, a God. But not just a creator. That 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 Islam. Yeah. That Islam. Creator. That Allah is the creator. So you see, don't you see that as, as a? Thing. When you when you think that Allah just means the God. 
So it's their no, a law of Islam with the characteristics of Islam that sent down the Quran, that sent down Muhammad. Like you still believe in Prophet Muhammad as a prophet, right? You may not. And I follow. Like, him. right? So, yeah. so there's more to Allah than just the word that means God, right? No, it just means like, God. It means God. There is no deities except the God. That's a universal. Yeah, but I mean, like, there's more connotations to the word that I'm saying, Allah, than just the Arabic word for God. I mean, the Islamic God. You're talking about what happened after Prophet Muhammad in the last thousand years when people went off track, just like how Christians started to say Jesus is the Son of God and they started to add these principles and make it culture and tradition that that's the religion. When in reality, your religion is far from that. Culture and tradition. No, I'm saying is Islam the is the is the Quran, the Quran is a huge part of Islam, right? Islam existed before the Quran and Islam exists without the Quran. How's that? Right, but the Quran is supposed to be, you're saying it, it doesn't serve as proof of Allah. So one has that's to arrive given. at what's that? That's a given. So it's a given. Islam, Allah, Allah's existence as the Islamic God is a given, right. and the Quran is not proof of Him because He already exists. It's just His the message. Quran, the Quran, the Quran is uh, like you see. I'm talking about binary. The Quran is the source code of how a human should think. Right, but so so, don't you see a problem with how? To you, it's so obvious and a given that Allah exists, but it can't be verbalized or no, nobody can be convinced through words? Uh, yes, well, the, I think the core problem is that you yourself understand that there is a chance of a higher power. You don't know what that means to you, but you could understand that there is a higher power. You could talk to a scientist and you say that, how did this world come in? And they say like... And that's a speculation. I'm saying there's a chance it could be a higher power. I'm, I'm leaving the unknown as possibly a higher power to get closer to the religious position. But I'm saying, doesn't it, like, doesn't it um, worry you? Like, it worried me when I thought, wait a second, I can't really verbalize why Allah exists and Islam is true aside from that it's a given. This puts a lot of people in jeopardy because... No amount of me telling them how great Islam is to me or how it makes me feel will convince them. Yeah, isn't isn't that a red flag that that there's no really. way to believe except already having it? No, no. The red flag is the fact that you can't accept that there's a creator. That's that's that, that's no. Unreal. That's, that's not unreal. even a red flag to me. Like I can understand how people arrive at that how, conclusion. How do you want me to vocalize that there's a baker? How do you want me to vocalize that there's a a builder? How do you want me no, to that, that he has qualities and specific wants and, and almost needs, like you wouldn't call no them needs. There is no needs. God has right, no but need. the way that he behaves and, and like demands your worship, it's almost needy. But even if you call it a, a desire, a want, God mm -hmm. wants you to worship him. So you're you're this is where your perspective is a little dark and twisted. So God isn't needing of any of this, and God doesn't want any of this from you. But the fact is, this is the best he really God. wants it, he doesn't want it. He doesn't want it. He doesn't need it. He doesn't want it. Does God doesn't want our worship? God God wants you to serve him. It's not want. It's God's telling you that's the best for you. This so, is what so you do. But God does want your worship. Okay, maybe want is the correct term. Yes, God does want you to be the best that you can because he created you. That 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 I can align with. But does God need you or God is expecting it from you? Expecting it, yes. Needs it, no. But and and here's a distinction. A lot of people uh, Sorry, yeah, yeah. say I'll, like I'll take that word back. Yes, he, he he created you so that you could serve him. The word worship to me is servitude. So I'm serving. Right, but but he doesn't back. he doesn't need it. But he, he wants it and will torture you if you don't do it the way he wants. But he doesn't need it. It sounds like he needs it without admitting that he needs it. Is is how this is being presented? The torture is you torturing yourself. So it's like. It's, it's, if you didn't believe that God is benevolent enough and he's gracious enough to let you live forever, because like life is nice, you know, that taste of life, that little life like apple, it's nice. And, and as long as people are not being a piece of poop, life can be nice. And there's no wars and people are getting along. Life is beautiful. And people would want to live forever and build forever. And so why would God, like if God is promising you like, hey, you're going to get to have to do that forever. You denying it, like, what do you want at that point? Like, why, why do you, why is it fair? It, and that's the thing, you see it as a denial, and that's how it's phrased in religion. It's a denial. It's like me choosing hell over heaven. That's not how it is. I'm not convinced that all that paradigm exists. Would it be nice if I could go somewhere where all my wishes come true? 
maybe and and maybe i'd still want an out from it i don't want to live there forever i can't imagine wanting to live there forever but i genuinely don't believe that these things will happen because there hasn't been anything to to demonstrate or convince me except that people say it's so self-evident to them okay but it's so self-evident that this earth is going to get destroyed because we've been right, but, but that doesn't mean self-evident that there that has to be something forever that is self-evidence. I have no, I have no proof that this Earth is going to be destroyed, but and it's been sitting here for six billion years. But I mean, th this world... pen is going to run out. Is that self-evident that my pen is going to be refilled, or someone's going to give me an eternal pen afterwards? No, no. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that like certain things that are self-evident is because the, the, the thing that makes it self-evident is you can, uh, like, uh, hypothesize it or predict it, right? For me to, to have. To come back to life like me i'm a driver in this body i believe that it's very possible why wouldn't it be possible possible is not self-evident that's very different things the thing that makes it evident is that it's very possible it's very possible for this earth to be broken like everything is possible in the world of like no physics and and you know you know metaphysics everything is possible but you nailed it on the head so this world is like imagine it's a computer simulation you can program whatever you want the person that but there's a difference between self-evident and everything is possible. Therefore, it's self-evident that this one specific possibility will happen. I don't, I don't understand where you're seeing the problem with self-evidence. The self-evidence is if someone has the carte blanche to program whatever they want, right? So it's self-evident that they could program it again or program something new or program something brand new. They no, just because they can doesn't mean that they will. That Self-evident means but they the obviously will do it again. They obviously will because they promise because God won't break their promise. But they're promising and you believe that they're promising because it's self-evident that this whole thing exists. Like there has to be a point where it's like, it's not self-evident that a God did promise that. Where? But you see, again, like I don't I don't have those stepping stones that you have when it comes to the Quran. Like to me, I find it that is very divine. And the thing that gives it the divinity. No, is... I'm the one who's missing the stepping stones here. Because you right. have arrived at the conclusion that it's divine. I need the stepping stones to arrive at the conclusion that it's divine. I worked and it's it. not self-evident. I worked with it. Maybe because of I had a different history than you. Maybe because you were such uh, like a person who was adhering to their parents a lot uh, and w walked with the system as much as you can. So maybe they shielded you too much from life. And uh, maybe if you had a different, like, you know, maybe if you were sorry for the world, maybe a word, but a little bit more rebellious or courageous. Maybe you would have had the bad taste of life in a sense where you did feel empty and depressed. And the thing that when you realize that, you know what, you may be on the wrong road. And that Wait, that's that, that's interesting. So for me to have found Islam self-evident, I would have. Way. That's yeah, I know, way. I know. I'm not that's saying that you're way. saying that's how my life is. But as a possibility right. that could have made me more religious if is if I was more rebellious and then became depressed because of bad decisions and retreated to belief. Then you could have seen that there was a better way, the way that you found in the Quran. That's that was so. So case. in that case, it would be me retreating to the familiarity of belief over a new, unfamiliar, and not good life. Actually, and that's the way to retain belief compared to me sitting through it and then realizing, wait, there's better without even believing. I guess I guess the assumption was that like someone was a believer in the first place. I wasn't a believer in the first place. I was a believer in God, but I I didn't know anything in regards to anything that was being talked about. I just knew the basics that but they were told. I grew up being like a believer and learning a lot more than the basics. So maybe that's why I had a lot longer to think about it, and I didn't go back to it with a point of like I need saving from a bad situation. Right. I went through good and bad with Islam in my life. But you so, you had you had your doubts. I think from the get go. Like, why, yeah, I did. why would God do this? Why would God burn people? I don't think God, if, he, if he's a, like, and everybody struggles with this. It's just not you. So I'll be honest with you. It's like, God, you're extremely, uh, like, like benevolent and you're very merciful. It's, it's a very hard co concept to grasp that pe people are going to hell forever. But then if you realize that those people that deny God and they deny that hereafter, it isn't that action that put them in hell. That's the, the start of whatever came after it's just because it, it's not a denial, though. Like, I don't see anyone denying Allah. It's, I see that people are saying it's self evident, and other people are saying, no, it's not. Yes. I, but you, okay, so it is a denial. How is it not denial? You, you, Be, because you like, reject it. You okay. haven't demonstrated anything that shows that it is self evident. So I'm not denying, uh, rejecting a truth. I am, I am 
almost ignoring your claim because it's not self-evident. But at, at the same time, you yourself don't have any, uh, uh, what's it called? You don't have, you don't have any um, standards nor like a checklist on what you would need for it to be evident that God exists. And if God exists, what he wants from you. So that's what I'm saying. Like you don't have like a criteria to be checked off. And when it if, comes to prophecy, if, if, if I were to make a list of criteria, would that make it more valid? Because the thing is, there's a difference valid. between like it's valid that you could say I didn't make that checklist of exactly how I want God to prove Himself to me, but that but is still it doesn't it. invalidate that you're claiming it's self-evident and only pointing to it being self-evident. And the examples are all about how you feel about it. It's not about feeling. The self-evidence is that there's a creator. To me, that is self-evident. Like, where... No, where beyond that? a creator, beyond a, a first cause, Allah, is Allah self-evident? Okay, so God is the creator. No, beyond just the idea that there needs to be a creator and a first cause for everything. Correct. Specifically, Allah with the Allah personality, with the Islam, is that self-evident? Okay, but because God... God Allah, God, He is evident and there is a creator. There isn't a concept that isn't around me that He hasn't, He had doesn't have a part in it. So for example, kingship, right? So we have presidents, we have kings, we have uh like rulers. So if we have to look at them that way, I'm gonna do the same thing to whoever created that concept, the ultimate king. If, but if I have, what if it's the other way around? We are we have created kings in our life. And, what what's that? We didn't create kings. We needed we needed kings. It's it's natural inclination for us to have leadership in high cross. Whatever the reason is, like there are kings, and then we everywhere. think and we think God must be like us. God must also be the biggest king. God must also get angry and jealous and, and happy no, and you sad. See, you're, you're, you're doing it. You're twisting it. I'm not saying that God must be like us. It's saying that if I'm showing this. Yeah, you're seeing the pattern of kings like how Allah is our king. I'm no, telling you the pattern might be the other way around. I understand where you're like saying that we are putting these human concepts towards God, but rather it's if I'm treating this person with this respect, I want to treat my creator with more respect than this person. That's all it is. It's it's not like it's not just about the respect, it's but believing claims about the creator, you're saying they're self-evident. Well, to me it's the concept of infinity. So yeah, so my God has to be able to listen to everything that what would make a god he has to see everything that make a god he has to know everything that would be that would be god he would have to be able to uh not lie because then he well yeah he shouldn't lie and i should be able to trust him i have well, each people. one of these can be argued about but I know none that. of these are really that self-evident but then self-evident to the point but that then what's a god on islam are self-evident what, what's god to you How, how's infinity and god to you like your definition of god is flawed at that point like to me, the definition that I see in my mind, like when someone says God, like, you know, like, okay, stuff for Allah, and like those Greek deities that people had that image. Okay, no, that doesn't fit what I see as God. Like I have an image of God that like I had parts of it where Islam just made, or like the Quran just made it like whew, bigger. And the thing that helped me, maybe this, this, maybe they'll answer your question, is the fact that I've been a computer programmer for my whole life. It just... Computers and me just clicked at a very young age. It's just the logic, the Boolean logic, the way it works, the programming. It's just something that I naturally understood. SubhanAllah. That was like a blessing from God to me. And because I understand that 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 view, I took it in like times that like by a billion and applied it to how I view God as well. So it's like however million, million calculations a computer does for it to simulate this image that's going in front of you, God is doing a billion calculations every second to simulate what's going on around me. And he knows exactly where everything is. So when God is saying that he has uh, like a, everything that's a small or big is in a clear book with, with him, it's like a database. And he knows where every electron with every entity and what people said and whatever happened. And God is like, uh, also it's like, this is a storybook where he's like copying everything that's happened. So he gets played back to us. I believe that. I see that. I see it. God gave me the proof that the computer is in front of me. I, I believe that it's all from him. But it's what you're doing in your life. Your job as a human being is what are you doing? You understand there's inputs and outputs. You see the outputs you have no control over. The only thing you have control over is your inputs. So do the best inputs you can. 
You want to be a dickhead and be a president and start wars? Then so be it. But here's the like the results. And you're going to cause a lot of hurt. You know, when you're going to come to the judgment, you're either on the left or the right. Simple. But th that idea of judgment in and of itself, the idea that we see injustice happen around us, therefore someone is going to make it all fair in the afterlife. Correct. Because it has to. Because otherwise the world is unfair and it sucks. That's not self-evident that there must be an afterlife and, and you know, uh, right and left sides and all that. That's maybe that, the world that, is unfair. That's the faith. So, but, okay, so here's, here's the thing. So what's, what's the point? What's the point of this? Like, if I, if I go into your mentality, that's the only question that I don't see work. So what's the point? And, I, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to be harsh. Like, what if you get to a point of depression where it's like, you know what? The world's unfair. It's not going to matter. Everything that I'm doing is stupid. I don't like, why am I doing these videos? Just off myself. It's going to matter absolutely nothing. And that's the result for a lot of people that go down a certain path. Not, not all of them, right? Some of them just go try to like take life as fuck. They become crackheads, not like actual physical crackheads, but they just want like that highest drug of life that they can attain. And the other just become extremely depressed and like, either try to shield themselves from pain or they just off themselves because there's no point. So, so that religious perspective gives you a purpose. I believe there are a lot of religious people who are still depressed because of people. There are people who feel depression beyond their, like beyond their yeah. circumstances and all that yeah, stuff. You, you know this very well, not just because of someone religious actual beliefs. Like aside from hypocrites and all, a lot of people, they say they're religious, but they want the worldly life. And they the, no, the, no, like the, even yeah. believers, like it, the insinuation here is that no believing person would ever feel depressed and want to kill themselves. I'm yeah. not saying like they would do it, but a lot of believing people do feel depressed and want to kill themselves and don't understand how like, because they, they, they hope that heaven will make it better. But you're saying that without God, what's the point of life or specifically for someone who's very depressed, what's the point of life? No, I'm, I'm saying without, without an afterlife or without a purpose, what's the point of life? Like if, if so, there so is like, no afterlife uh, and there is let, no Let me put the analogy this way. If you go to a restaurant and it's not an open buffet, is there no point to eating? How's that? That's not what I mean. I'm saying like that, that's, that's a weird way. I'm not talking about the open buffet and the rewards. I'm saying like uh, no, I mean like food in, in a small quantity, right? Could be good, could be bad. You order something, you get what you get, right? You, maybe you don't get to send it back to the kitchen. You make an order and you live with it. Uh, open buffet, you get to try everything in the buffet forever, as long as you want. So you can still enjoy a restaurant just because it's not an all-you-can-eat forever hedonistic kind of existence or even eternal bliss, if you want to call it that. So what's just the because of going to the restaurant. Like I'm not talking about just eating. You're going. You're to already in the restaurant. We already exist. There's no. We don't have to come up with a point. Like say, say God is not real. A religion is not eat? real. That's what I'm saying. Like why eat? If if you're in this restaurant, you just woke up in a restaurant. Why eat in the first place? That's my question to you. Like what? What's because the because you're hungry? Because there's food? Because it's enjoyable? But you're gonna like, die. Like you, you've seen people so, die around. You're gonna get to that point. What's the point? Like you're going. So there. so why why do you like not? rush death and then you go to heaven and do all that stuff like because, why are you living it's at been all? very clear to me and i'm sorry this might sound off track i would love to see god like to me that's like and the only thing that's keeping me in between me and seeing god and asking god directly and being in his grace forever to me my heaven is to having the best thoughts that i can have and and have the best relationship with my lord with no distractions and no like past events and thinking about conversations like this it's just a straight amazing feeling uh straight thought process that I have with my Lord. And the only thing that's keeping me between that life and this is death. I want to die. I, I can't kill myself because that's self-oppression. But I would love to die. I can't wait to die. I would love to die and like... You know, that's, you. that's sad because like, hey, I, I, I had these thoughts as a child. As a child, I thought, not because I my life sucked. Be. I thought, I, I wish I died before I hit puberty because then I'd get to go to heaven. Okay, like, yeah. if, like you see you see you i guess the thing that makes me different from what i understood from the religion to me it's yes the heaven's amazing because i get to like do what i would like to do on earth that i didn't do on purpose like i purposely chose to certain things not do is just because i wanted to focus on my relationship with god to me my prize is having a very good relationship with god like this i have a love for him that's incomparable like 
I love him so much. Like it's very to, like, to the point that you, if it wasn't haram to die, I would you would him. want to die as soon as possible. One hundred percent. I would one hundred percent go see him. Like, what's the point at that point? Like, what's the point so, of okay, going? Okay, let me let, let me point something out. Say Islam didn't have the rule that says it's haram to kill yourself, and it's actually admirable, like a monk like kind of tradition where. If you want to go to a certain area and like you off yourself there and like it's a the, tradition the thing, thing. The thing between me and like being in the grace of God is death. Yes, if there was no if there was no limitation on suicide and that's one of the ways to show ultimate loyalty to God, I would take that ultimate loyalty. Isn't take... that concerning to you? So no. let's pause for a second here. Let's pause and think about it as an outsider. Like I'm someone who doesn't believe that Allah is the God and Islam is true. And I see that someone's thought process is, if this book commanded me to die right now, I would do it. And the way I would see it is, that person is about to die and there's nothing else afterwards. I know, but at the same time, I can ask you the same question. Don't you find it kind of weird that you're willing to go through, I'm not pushing you to anything, don't, don't twist my words, and I know how the devil mm -hmm. works. But isn't it weird that you're willing to sacrifice, like to go through this unnecessary pain Right, and all this torment, and you having to sit with me for like what an hour and a half, and hear this stuff that can cause you headaches, and and having to go through these bad events, which are usually more in life or like mundane events in life, just for these little parts, might as well just if there's nothing after, why go through this pain? Like, I'm well, sorry. The like, thing it, is, I, I already not, exist. I already yeah, exist. You and exist, it, but you have and, the ability to not exist. And if not, my life sucked so much, and there was no way out of. Like that's that's the case for for example, um, assisted suicide for people who are like suffering from very chronic illnesses. Like, say someone has chronic pain that's so unbearable, like eight out of ten on the scale of pain, some you know a neurological condition. It might be more humane if they decide to, if life is so unbearable for them to die. But for most everyone else, there's almost always a way to find enjoyment in life. You're already here. If you kill yourself, the, you're not going to have a chance to find any enjoyment, and that's probably the end of the, the line. It doesn't that's matter. It. For, for someone in your position, it literally doesn't matter. Like, all these memories and all these, well, like... Good no, and at that point, that, life, but things matter, that. like, because we experience them. So I eat because I, I don't want to feel hungry, because I want to live, because I don't want to feel bad right now, because I'm alive to feel. But so to, to end thing, it would be to not feel. That, all those feelings that you have it, when you die is endless, useless. Like, right, but I the want the good feelings. I, I, I still want to have the good and bad till I die. Why? Because I want to experience them. Was that change? It doesn't change anything about. Okay, so here, here, here. There's a few ways I could answer that. My existence could change things. Like, say I, I cease to exist after today. Maybe there's several live streams where someone would have had a good moment that would have helped their life that never happened because I died. Who cares? So. But I care because I care about people. Once I'm dead, I'm not going to care. But right. I'm saying right now I care. Okay, right? but, but that's what I'm saying. So like whatever input that you're doing is useless. It, it it's has not because people no do experience things. You're saying unless things are infinite, they're, but they're pointless. But, they're, but their, experience, their experience as well is useless. So you're saying unless there's something to, uh, what was it, um, um, like forever, I don't know what the word is right now, but unless there's something to frame every human existence for eternity, every human existence is worthless unless there's an eternity for it. That's the sad reality. If there is no eternity, everybody's useless. Everything. No, it's it's not. It's like, well, what's do, do, what here. happens to animals in the afterlife? In they go to heaven. Um, they clearly go no, to heaven. Don't they like resolve no, their differences that's, that's, and die? That, that's because of one verse they didn't understand what it meant. But it, no, it, it's very clear animals are going to heaven. My friend, even the sun you'll find in heaven. It, this this is what I'm saying. Sunnis don't do a good job in understanding what the Quran is actually saying. Because if they did, and here's the biggest proof, if they did, their countries wouldn't be having all these dictators and bad rulers. They wouldn't be in the lowest part of the world in the societies. They wouldn't well, have all these. Trouble. Okay, I, I I might have questions for you about your you know your disagreement with Sunni Islam and whatnot. But yeah. for now, I'll, I'll try to focus on that point. So, if there is no eternal afterlife. Even the enjoyment that I'm telling you I want to continue having, you're saying there's no point to it. Of course. Why that's not? That, Why, I'm not, like, I'm not, not subjective. Objectively, that's the truth. If there is, th there is no ob ob objectively, 
the only the only frame of reference here is my experience and the people around me and the people in this life. If my death, if but but my people continue like I matter as long as I'm alive and the people that know me are alive and the people that are affected by my actions and but they're gonna die too and everything that they did is going to their graves and it, it mattered they, while they were alive. But who, the idea that things don't matter unless they're eternal is a very very Islamic idea. No, I'm saying that it's not a, a self-evident actual idea. reality. The actual reality of what you're saying is that however good, even if you lived a thousand years, well, however much you're doing right in the large scheme of things of the whole universe, if there is no part two, right, then everything you did is for nothing. There, there but, is no reason by, by that logic, reason. everything you do in heaven is insignificant because it's an infinite reality no. No, no, no. nothing you do is ever significant here's, here's here's no it does because whatever you're doing now is going to be reflected in your heaven your mentality no, no, i'm saying like uh, let's let's say what, what you level. need to do now to get you to heaven but you're in heaven and you have an infinite scale of uh, on the timeline no Aladdin, anything you do is so insignificant you. no your 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 heaven is based on your mentality so however much you work here now your heaven either becomes better or worse based on how good your mentality was. That's that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying what, however good you did here, and you go to an amazing heaven. Great. Infinity dilutes the 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 value of it. Like, what? say everyone on Earth had gold, like mountains of gold. Gold would be worth nothing at that point. But here's that's now you're talking about time. I'm saying if you live forever on Earth, then yes, your experiences matter. If you've never died on Earth, then your experience matters so much and everybody around you matters to you so much because you're constantly having that euphoria and you're having these experiences both bad and good if there if death was not a problem and yes it will everything will matter to you very much even your belongings and everything that's going on around you so when it comes back to the end life when time has become no value right because on earth we only have time as value when that has no value, then your belongings start having a lot of value to you, and your 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 like spouses and your family and whatever's going on will have a lot matter to you. So, like, let me explain to you who Abraham might be. Abraham would be like maybe like a lot of people. He would be the leader of a community of as as the size of Earth, for example, and someone who just like didn't do much for their life might have just a house and a car. And he's happy with that. And he has this building. And, and you know, this is... But th different. that doesn't really tie into, like, if you have a finite amount of life and time on Earth, then it is valueless. I'm saying, yes, it is, if there is no part two. Why? That's not a self-evident idea. That's a it very Islamic it's idea. It, what? It's, a, it's a very logical idea. I'm not... No, just, it's a very Islamic... Th this it, is what it, Islam it, plays off as logic when it's not self-evident as anything relating but to the take logic. It, take it as a quantum, like a, not quantum, like something that's empirical, something that you can count. So all these experiences that we're... Let's count all these experiences and put them as a number, a billion, thousand, whatever number, right? When everybody dies, that number's for nothing. So I don't no, care about these zero. experiences existing past my death. I care about... I am alive to experience them. You're saying... Me that's living effective. and continuing to live is as good as not experiencing them at all. In reality, that's what you're telling me. What reality? In, in the reality that you're living, if the reality that there is no afterlife, then everything that right. you experience, the summation is no point. You, you're, yes. still not, you're, you're still not explaining why. So I, I gain value from my perception of life. And I'm right. happy, sad, whatever. There, there's value here, right? And value to the people around me. Just because it's not infinite doesn't mean that it's suddenly valueless. But you're the one who's putting something, you're putting value to something that what you're saying is valueless. Like, I mean, it has no value. Like, if there, if there is no purpose to life, and when you die, it's, that's it, it's over, then there is no value to what you're doing. Yes. That, that's not an objective or self-evident statement. That's the way that you see your life and everyone else's life. From what you're explaining to me. Like yeah, if, so so if you see no, that if, if God doesn't exist, there's no afterlife, or let's just stick to the afterlife point. If there's no afterlife, mm -hmm. you say your life as valueless because you're ready to die right now to go to the afterlife. No, That's why I'm, it feels like it's no, valueless. I'm saying, I'm saying like whatever, me as a person, after I die, and if there is no afterlife, everything that I did, the summation is zero. It doesn't matter how good or bad or whatever it is. 
there who's who's no summing who's counting like you're still thinking of the idea that someone is up there adding and counting no, 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 me, me, me. i mean that the amount of experiences that i had the good times that i had all of that the actual result and the net result of everything that i achieve is nothing there was no point like that's one thing is, does the point have to be an infinite statue that you like look and admire once it, once it's done or just the experience no, now you're changing the topic tell me what is the point if there is no uh, afterlife, whatever the afterlife is, I'm talking about your point of view. If there is nothing, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm telling you, the point is what I'm currently experiencing. You insist that there has to be some uh, eternal symbol no, and, and life I'm, afterwards to show for it. I think the easier way to explain this is it's not there has to be an afterlife to explain it to you. In, in what you're explaining to me, from what I understand, that these personal experiences that I'm going through in my life. If I die and I have no idea that they ever happened, then those personal experiences never actually mattered. They mattered while you were alive. You're saying that, but you yourself, it won't matter to you because you will never know that. Like They mattered not... while I was alive. It doesn't matter to me when I'm dead, but it mattered while I was alive. So why would I end it and end them mattering? Okay, I'm not talking about you ending it. I'm talking about just the reality of it just the actual yeah I'm, I'm telling you the reality of it actual. as long as i'm aware to experiencing experience it it has value and the people who but when you're not aware it, anymore does it have value as long as someone else is aware like say i am dead but my relatives or friends are just for you just for you does it have value after you're not aware to you no because i don't exist no, to perceive said, whether they have no. value or not you said no so there since it has no more value to you so at that point, you're sitting in that forever at no value and no remembrance and no recollection. Well, that's like saying your car burn, it burns gas, so therefore it has no value because it's burnt by the end of your trip. What? No, I'm like, saying like it's, like, it's like me coming and just like deleting you. No, no, like th this is a very good analogy. You, you fill your tank, you take the car on a road trip somewhere else, right? Now you have no gas and you have no money that, that you spent on the gas. Does that mean that that trip was of no value? No, that's no. The trip is still there, and I still have my car, and I still recollect what happened. I'm talking from a personal. If I just deleted you right now, right? So, to you yourself in that situation, you're gone. That's it. Like, right? You. But it doesn't invalidate that I had value when I was alive, and like I perceived that, that value and I enjoyed that it. That value only exists as, as long as there's other people, as you said. But when they're gone, then your value is gone. So, it's such a selfish idea to want your value to remain forever. Yes, my value only remains as long as I and the people that care about me and like why, why are affected by me value? exist. I'm, I'm talking from an objective point of view. It's not about like having... Yeah, can you explain what it is objectively that means that... You have no it's... purpose. Your purpose is what you're making it out to be. And at the end of the day, the net result, the summation is absolutely zero because it, there's not no scale to measure it to. It's other than your personal feeling, but the summation... Maybe, maybe that's a reality that's difficult for you to accept that it is the reality. It's it's scarier to realize that no matter what you do, the sun is going to blow up in a few billion years and no one's going to exist anyway, no, whether you're a good person or a bad person, because that then makes it harder to no, think... It's a disgusting reality. It's not about accepting it. It just doesn't make sense to me. Like everything well, it's, it's not about whether it's so it, this seems to be where the world is headed so if that is where the yeah. world is headed then you have to think i am doing good deeds and enduring hardship for what for the sun blowing up at the end and that seems di more difficult where i would say yes i will do it despite the sun blowing up in the end because people will perceive like my that's life right now that's not fair for me because i personally know that the world is going to blow up and i i believe like god can put like a uh Right, but the world. only thing keeping you sane is that there's an afterlife. Like you're you're ready to go there. No, okay. So if I didn't believe in God, I wouldn't consider the afterlife, and I would have been doing what I'm doing was with enjoying my life to the peak, like doing what I personally wanted as my inclinations and trying to get. But it's just because I see you're twisting my things. I love God so much. I want to meet God. I want to go to the afterlife. But if I didn't believe in the afterlife, I would be living my life to the fullest. That, that's the difference. I wouldn't want to be killing but, myself. But so if, if you didn't believe in the afterlife, you would see that your life has value? No. You would see that your life has no value unless there's a continuation of it. That's how value works. No, value is not an infinity. 
Like no, no, things no. can be valuable even value, though they're not value, infinite. Value is a, has a purpose. That's what gives value value. It has its place and position. If it right. And my no, purpose right now, I have purpose to live. And the value that I have on other people is experienced by them till they die. We're, we're so just because it doesn't things. live past my life doesn't mean that it's valueless. You're juggling between, okay, so I agree with you there. If when it comes to the worldly life, yes. But in the afterlife, your value is zero. But there is, you're saying if there is no afterlife, your value in the afterlife is zero. Right. Well, yes, because there is no afterlife. But I'm in a very, very, very like devout believer that there is an afterlife because it makes more sense that way to me. It means but that you, you whatever haven't explained how it makes more sense or like what? what you haven't explained how it makes more sense. You said your life has no value after death if you don't believe in an afterlife. I did. And I said, I after death it doesn't matter i have value as long as i'm alive you're saying not only that but you don't see a reason why one would continue to live and you're not insinuating anything but you're saying i don't see a reason why anyone can, would continue to live if there's no afterlife so it's not just that your life ceases to exist and have value after you die but, but also there's no point right now but i'm saying that there's two ways like you either kill yourself or you enjoy your life to the fullest if you don't believe in the afterlife but because you believe in the afterlife you want to build there instead of building here that's that's the difference in mentality. There's an in between, like this. The, this regulation seems to be just between. popular among religious believers that I would do everything to the fullest in hedonistic fashion that's if there I was mean. no afterlife. That's how I would do it, and that's what I used to do. You were gonna, and maybe religion. that's what makes you more inclined to believe. Like, like, what? and you're the second caller today who who would say like they have these inclinations to do things that are maybe hedonistic. Everyone so has. this gives them like the idea that you're doubling or tripling or forever like investing into infinite hedonism in the afterlife. Aladdin, now just question. If you had, uh, I think you have, uh, you have your spouse. If you didn't have your spouse, wouldn't you be go looking out for somebody just to maybe spend some time with them? Wouldn't you enjoy that for a little no, bit? Uh, no, I currently don't have a spouse, but no, oh, like my, my approach to dating is still not sleeping around just because I can and there's no restriction. Uh, that's not that's not what I'm saying. That I'm saying that wouldn't you like go if that's something that you enjoy that you would go do it in whatever style that is comfortable comfortable to you. It's not about morals or immorals at that point. And if you wanted to be a pig, there's nothing really stopping you. Not that it's like wrong or immoral at that point, right? It's no, just, there there is no that, consenting. The way that I relate to people. It's not compatible with me to to do that because it takes away a piece of me if I were to go out and, and be a pig. What's the piece? Like, are you saying that without, I don't know if you have a spouse or not, but say you don't and no, no religion, you would be going out and, you know. I, I would I would, I would, would do whatever I would find enjoyable. So whatever I wanted to do, in that, it's not hedonistic and it's not about murdering and it's not about being a pig. Whatever I can get my hands on, heedless completely heedless because I have no consequence as long as I don't put myself in a position to find myself in a box or to find myself without friends. That's, Why that's, is it that's that, the normal like, approach. I, I hear this from people who say they're waiting for the afterlife and it yes. seems like because you want to do this but more in the afterlife. No, 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 no. My, my afterlife, as I said, is having a good relationship with God. For me, it's a mentality. If everything around me is going to break, and everything it's like imagine spending a hundred years to buying a car and the car breaks the next day what's the point of investing all your energy and effort there i'm going to believe in the promise and i'm going to work towards that promise by taking what i require for me just to survive and whatever extra i have is to help others survive and then in the afterlife i'll have my family i'll have my business i'll have my cars and i will live like i'm living here but without Thieves and liars and people trying to tell me that God doesn't exist because then those issues won't exist anymore. It would be a normal society, a normal community, no war, no lying. It's just how I'm living, just better. But it's not about being pigs and in, 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 in partying and all that. No, that's not how God explains heaven in the Quran. God says you have pure wives. It doesn't mean that you're going to have 72 virgins because that's not part of the Quran. See what I'm saying? I'm just I'm just holding out on living that life that you're living. I'm gonna live it in heaven. But it's the the reason why we're on earth and we have free will is God is seeing like, hey, if I put you in heaven, how would you act? So I'm gonna act like how I would act in heaven. 
But knowing that everything's going to break, I'm not going to invest 100%. I don't act like how I would in heaven. If if I lived in a heaven with no um, harm no... being done, where I can do hedonistic things without harm being done to myself or other heaven. people. That's not heaven. That's not heaven. Now, you see, this is where the weird mentality is. God is putting these laws on you on earth because you're going to naturally live those laws. You're not going to go fuck anybody you want in heaven. No, there's like, obviously the people that you have attachment to, you're not going to like covet your neighbor's wives. You're not, you're going to live like a normal human being. And there but is- You have her lane in heaven. Like that's, what? that's heavenly maidens. Yeah, they're beautiful girls. And they're, they're here to like, but they're my wife. Like, I'm going to treat her like my wife. Like, you, you, you don't understand- What about how... your actual wife? Okay, well, I come from the fact that you can't have multiple wives. You know, it's not like, but to me, it's like, it's not marriage. It's the fact that for me, I love working. So to me, my heaven is I'm going to be able to work. And there's a clear verse that says, So like, they're like fruitful and whatever they're working. So we're going to build cities and we're going to build uh, like these monstrous monstar things and have this electrical equipment. And we're just going to live it forever. And you're just going to keep building these cities. But there is no more war and people dying and hunger and, and all these it sounds things. like a nice fantasy but it doesn't sound self evident sense, bro it's not fantasy that's like i believe this so th to me this makes more sense like it, it sounds like it's it makes more sense cuz you really want it to happen no, but it doesn't say anything about it makes sense that it will happen okay so because i've reached to this conclusion and i am so certain of it okay i've had certain experiences and it's not, 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 not like certain experiences where it helps me uh, support and remind me of this belief. So, and because I have this, I'm just very like, like, I don't, I don't want to say I don't care, but a lot of things don't harm me. And a lot of things don't get to me. And I'm and and like the physical world around me is supporting me in, in, an, in a nice way, in a beautiful way to get me to that point, because I feel like I found the truth that Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Jesus, Prophet Moses, Prophet David, Prophet Abraham, Prophet Solomon, all these prophets came to a similar conclusion. Like, but so, see, I found methods to relate to my environment and let things not get to me. Like, the point is, I have live streams where people are not, not you, like some people are very belligerent and they shout and stuff, and I don't let it get to me. I can have the same result without the belief in God. So it doesn't prove to me that it's a belief in god it proves to me that it works for you aladdin like again this is one thing that i, I find with atheists you give them an example they say well okay so because of this one example you're going to sum summarize the reason why you believe no, this is one out of many examples yes because the way that proof usually works is you don't give a constellation of things and say whichever one works for you and if that's the case then you can look at each and every single one of them and then say this doesn't seem to prove anything. This doesn't seem to prove anything. So it's like it's like having putting your case in front of a judge and throwing a file full of evidence, and every single one of them is not really evidence on its own, right? Like mm -hmm. a, a lawyer would go through it and be like, wait a second, or a pr prosecutor would be like, this doesn't hold up. This doesn't hold up. This doesn't hold up. Just because you have an impressive file of many connected things, seemingly doesn't but make really it stronger. Know, right? But that's. I believe that's how life works. And that's how conclusions are came up with. How people come to conclusions is by connecting the world around them. They put those connections that they made to the test. If the test holds up, they hold on to it. They might not have the full grasp of the theory or they might not have the full understanding of what the material shows, but they have just enough for them to be satisfied with the answer. Trying to give that satisfaction to or try to give that answer to somebody else is very difficult because they don't, they don't, we don't share the same experience. You did not witness what my eyes witnessed. We did not read the same material. But then how is it anything about it objective if a big part of it is feeling and thinking and experiencing through one specific person's life? How is it object objective proving because anything? Because me, me and others came to the same conclusions based on different experiences. And oh, me and others came to the same conclusions based on different experiences. Right. And I, this is this is that's it. That's where like our mental block is like that's where me and you cannot ever see eye to eye like to me yeah like i don't i don't i can't understand your side and you can't understand my side but we do we we, we do understand what futra is the natural inclination where that you know what like as children we should be peaceful and we were peaceful and we could get along whether you believed in god or not let's not talk about religion let's just keep to our sides but if you're going to try to teach my kids that god doesn't exist i'm going to have a problem with that 
and I won't bother your kids, but let me teach my kids what I want. It's like that's simple. You know, I'm in the business of making people believe in God because I believe like that gives them enough support in their life and enough limitations so that they don't go hurt other people if they can't control. Like life is about self-control. And I believe religion is the best tool to teach someone self-control. And on the other side is that if you if you if you're in the business of trying to eliminate me, I'm, I'm going to do the same. So. So here's the, the problem with your statement of why you believe is it boils down to that it's very personal and it's self-evident and you can't see it any other way. So how would you be in the business of getting people to believe in God if you can't verbalize this is why God, Allah, specifically Islam, is true? Because what I verbalized to you, some people understood and some people like you didn't understand. And I can't make everyone understand. That's not my position. Because if God wanted, he would have made everybody understand. But he gave and, up. And that's another point. I know, I know, I know. Why would God not want to make it, everybody understand? Because he made a promise. He's not going to break his promise. He gave the us promise. enough. Yes, he gave you enough information for you to make your decision. And whatever decision you made was your own. So I go back to that idea where uh, like you're building the apple pie. You put the ingredients of this belief. So now you're going to eat the... And you could change the ingredients as, as, as long as you're alive. But because you put enough ingredients and you're working towards it, you walk down that path. So you're the ones who went put but those. You didn't even spell what these ingredients are. Uh, doubt, uh, like looking. No, I mean like the, the recipe for the apple pie without the impurities. You weren't able to spell that because a lot yeah, of it, it is, is self-evident. It's, it's the ability to listen. It's the ability to show uh, humility, which I explained is not like being okay with not knowing things until the answer comes to you. And the other thing is faith. And this is the biggest test of human being is because we're very intelligent. It's very difficult for us to believe something that we don't like. Like it's like telling a dog, you know, like, let's go to the park. Us as a human being is like, where's the park? When are we going to get to the park? We have all these questions. But why, meanwhile, a dog, I'm sorry, I'm not comparing humans to a dog like that. But, dog but will, if oh. you throw these ingredients together, you could come up with cherry pie, which is Christianity. The same exact ingredients. Yeah, but now when it comes to the difference between what I believe and others believe is that my understanding of God shows a lot more loyalty to the understanding of uh, like an infinite. Having a son means that you have an heir. Having an heir means that there's a possibility you're going to die. But God was never born. God would never end. God is there, there are ways to like to talk around that kind of stuff to, to show you that it's not it's actually the same as having a son and so on. But the point is, like the 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 recipe is not as clear cut as you think it is. That only an imp impurity would make you not come up with an apple pie. The same recipe could get you to another religion or to no religion. But that's what I'm saying. So it's whatever you're putting is getting you to a path. As I said, like God decided that if you do X, Y, and Z, this is the result. You're doing the X, Y, and Z. But if you did X, Y, and A, you get a different result. That's 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 what you call predeterminism. It's not predeterminism. Uh, sorry, that is like uh, like everything already has been answered and you get to pick you you can't like jump off a, a building and expect to fly that's not what god programmed god programmed you jump off a building you fall but you're the one who jumped so god's will is that you're going to break your legs for jumping but god didn't will for you to go jump that's what i'm saying that's the difference between like what god programmed and what you chose god programmed that if you choose to like have all these doubts and insult prophet muhammad and insult certain things choose to have doubts again that's that's the problem you that we see here doubts. just as it's self-evident to you in a way that cannot be described and convinced Aladdin. someone else just because you got just because you got the, the concept I, I have these concepts where it's like you know what there's doubt here but i can stop myself it's, it's like i can stop myself it's like you know what i mean yes, i've you, spent more years i'm guessing thinking about it as a believer than you like you said you grew up not really i was really old. like I was always a believer. I was always understanding God. I just didn't put as much attention as I wanted to. And in the last 10 years, okay, in the last 10 years or so, I've dedicated a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of resources to serving my God. So, yeah. So, yeah. what I'm saying is, it's not like I came across the idea and I'm like, I'm arrogant. I don't want to wait to figure it out and I'm going to move on. It's so self evident to a way, in a way that I can actually describe it to people and it makes sense. And I can't just say, that it's just about my perspective of it, but I can point to the things that don't add up about it. And yet you see that it's more likely that self-evident and it makes sense is the correct answer. Well, because your method is much easier and people want to take the easier route.
That's why there's more disbelievers than there My are. method is more defined. Your method is a lot easier. My, no, it's, it's a lot more spelled easier. out. It's a lot less like vague of just believe me. Well, and actually, you have your to method see for is yourself. very vague. But the things that are vague to you, you just don't qualify as vague. And it's the same with me. The things that you're saying are vague to me are not vague to me. So it's whatever vagueness that you're finding. I don't find that. But vice, like on the other flip side, when you come to the afterlife, like and, and the purpose of life, to me, that's very vague on your end. Like, you don't tell me what's the purpose of life. Like, it's no, just random. We, we tried to have that conversation. I know, and it's very difficult. Like, your, your point is there's no purpose to life unless there's an afterlife. I'm telling you that's looking at it from your point of view. There can be point to finite things. But here, like, I don't want to rehash that conversation. And my answer to you is that, like, remove the afterlife, right? And remove anything that happens after death. At that point, it's just because... You go through all these cool processes, but when you're at death, those processes doesn't matter to you at that point. That's it. That's you're like, saying things don't matter after they ended. Based and on what you're I don't saying, see an that issue with that. But yeah, that things don't matter. Like after I I end, and the people whose lives I affect that are still alive after me, after they end too. Right. And, and after we, all we life ends, that. yes, things end. Like, but to me, then there is no purpose, and there is no purpose. Unless things are infinite, there is no purpose? No, I think things have a purpose. Let's not talk about the afterlife because that's not, then we're going to be rehashing the thing. I believe from a, a person who looks at the world around them that everything is done purposefully and things have purpose. Even if people think that they're not doing it out of purpose, there's a purpose why people say things and do things. So the fact that everything around me has a purpose, I feel like the, the bigger picture, there is a purpose. And God told me that the purpose is that like this is a test to see if I deserve the better world. Alhamdulillah. Well, it was now, a very interesting discussion. Well, can I answer your question at the beginning? Sure. Yeah. Uh, reason why I found your channel is I saw some shorts that you clicked uh, that you made, so I clicked them and I watched them, and then I saw some certain animations that you made, and I hated you for it. Uh, and then I saw it. You know, I started looking into you and seeing what what you were about. Uh, I saw that you're like, you know, your demeanor and, and the way that, like, it sounds like you came from a good family, so I'll, I'll give you that. But then you, I saw a video in a sense where you were talking about, uh, um, you were talking about your sexual orientation, and then you said that you don't like people doxing you or you don't want people doxing you. It's not that you matter, but you cared about who your significant other was at that time. So you had a significant other, and you said that you wanted to protect them because you love them at the time. And... Now, this is a link, you know, like from a man to another man. There's a lot of people that they don't, might not think about this stuff too much. But when it comes to like significant others, it's not someone that like we can explain to you, but like our, and you, you should understand this. Our love to Prophet Muhammad is something that's very, very, very dear to us. Like, you know, this man, like for me on a personal level, he saved me from a lot of pain in the world, from my own mentality. And he, he that book that he was brought down to him gave me peace of mind. So I, I've, I've, I value that man a lot, and especially for what he done. I know he has a lot of enemies, and I know Jesus has a lot of enemies, and people hate them just because it's a cool thing to do sometimes. And some people just read some stories about him that other people wrote. Like I'm talking about Hadith and whatnot. But I just feel like that same approach that you had about protecting your like loved ones, people are going to protect their loved ones too. Prophet Muhammad is very loved. So maybe you should reconsider some of the like videos that you're doing about Prophet Muhammad. You're free to do what you want. You know, at the end of the day, you're well, going to if, if if my significant other is out there preaching a certain thing and people are doing things in their name, then I can only protect them physically, but I can't protect them from scrutiny. And I don't I wouldn't expect to. I wouldn't come out here and say, How dare you all talk about my significant other? Because my significant other is in the public eye as a moral guide. So But okay, I, but here's the thing, like now scrutinizing what people say is one thing but scrutinizing him himself is a different thing because you don't know what he said and you don't know what he's been through and it's just people's testimonies and you know that like muhammad doesn't to me i don't see him as a person that i have a vendetta against or anything no you he have a vendetta about the idea it's about him no he, he's an idea he's a, a symbol he's a he's a he, he's a character that people are preaching about with all sorts of variations in his personality. That's the character that 
has to be picked apart or else people might follow in his footsteps. No, and brother, you see, you should pick out what people are saying about him. I agree with you. Like certain stuff people say about him and say that this is part of the religion. It isn't part of the religion and, and no mind should be accepting it. And them accepting it is a problem. But you picking on the person himself, people like me get hurt. And like, and I, I showed you nothing but respect today. But I would hope that, you know, like you would think of us, not the ones that are attacking you, the ones that are have willing to have our conversations with you, that we're getting hurt. And if you're a person that wants to appreciate life to its fullest, maybe you should consider that these people, like who are your family, your direct family, and I, I know they might not know what's going on with you. Maybe they do. I don't know you. But they wouldn't appreciate it. It's just because we have this sense of love for him. And we don't know where the love comes from. You don't know how love acts and love is crazy and all this stuff. So just like maybe well, have us in mind. I, I've thought about it a lot, but it's it's not enough that people love him and their feelings would be hurt if anything is said about him in a critical manner or if he's satirized. And if you notice, I don't know if you've watched what, what I've made and I, I don't expect I you to, but it's I, the, I the like, point isn't to like to... Like the point isn't to like draw him as like, look, here is a, a, a pig and here's the prophet and like, let's get people mad. The point is to. You're showing these stories. Yes. What's that? You're showing like, your liberal that nobody can stop you drawing him and all this. But not, story... not exactly. No, it's it's to to show you the stories demonstrated in animation to show you the, the point of it. Like if I were to tell you the story about someone else than Muhammad, this could be funny or this could be interesting to think about. So just because it's him doesn't mean that I, I get won't it. do it just because it's Muhammad. Uh, trust me. I understand. I get it. Mm -hmm. But you, like from my perspective and the perspective of a lot of people, uh, not the Sunnis, some of the Sunnis, we don't attribute those things to the prophet. So you're you're but you're not your problem because many do and and here's here's but the issue many, with many like people not... attribute things to jesus and you know jesus never said or did no but things that people uh, people attribute these things to muhammad because people believe that he's saying these things and, and, like, and, and there's harm that, that comes from letting people just go with the idea that this person is untouchable and everything he ever did or said is correct I can't, he, everything he did was correct. Everything he said was correct, but we don't know everything that he did and we don't know what, what was said. People say he said a lot of things that I, I believe he didn't and he did a lot of things that he actually didn't do. So that's my issue with that community, okay? And that so whole the, Wouldn't venture, your issue then be with the people giving Muhammad a bad name? So no, 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 no. The issue is that they are willing to defend Muhammad and they're not defending God. That's the biggest issue. That's shirk. You, you see, I'm being very clear with you. They've committed so much shirk that they don't even realize it. They're heedless to their own shirk. And they've said a lot of things about the prophet and they try to pass it off that the prophet said, but prophet never would any do any of that uh, stuff that they try to attribute to. And God said to like, give, for example, give uh, like, uh, you know, peace and blessings to the prophet they give peace and blessings to the prophet and his family and his friends and we have nothing we don't need to know about his friends and what happened after prophet Muhammad. so that's the issue uh and because they're so like uh you know like you know saudi mentality kingship kind of like you you cross me i kill you right they don't understand that a lot of those people that wrote about prophet muhammad never met him so and uh to speak about that you get in a lot of problems but I'm not well, then then I, I gotta ask you this directly. Did you have more emotional response or issue or objection to my um criticism yeah, I, and, and satirization yeah. of the prophet or to Sunnis perpetuating this image of Muhammad? Okay, so I have a problem with Sunnis perpetuating this image with, of Muhammad, but they're doing it from a sense of guidance, deluded blind faith guidance, and not all of it, just some of it. Your yours was an attack. And there's no other way to say that. Yours, there, I, there is. It's the criticism of his character, and he, but here's here's the thing: they're they're the, not attacking him. They're, that's the difference, my, like, But I here's the, the difference: is the actual real life um, consequences because of their teaching of him. Let's assume that Muhammad is actually better than the Sunni Islam, and this is all like a fabrication of what Islam was supposed to be and who he he is. Yeah. Because of people teaching Muhammad that way, the Sunni way. People right. have been harmed following right. in the footsteps of that man Correct. way more than people's feelings would be hurt by them I'm, coming across my videos. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about the. You, we could definitely see the side effects 
of the shirk that they committed, the association they did to God and his messenger, because we're living it day to day in, in the Middle East. And, and it's very difficult to escape because of people's close mindedness of them being taking their like sheikhs as almost lords. Sheikh said it, that's it. Like, or ulama said it, that's it. That's the problem. So when it comes to you though, they're, they're coming from a sense of like, this is what I found my parents. This is my religion. I need to protect myself. There's a lot of craziness going on and I'm not going to like try to like go against the mainstream. That's their position. You, on the other hand, you're coming from a position of retaliation and attack because of their actions. So if they were actually doing their part correctly, you wouldn't need to do those videos, nor would if you needed to have that reaction. But you taking that reaction is going down uh, a path of attack. Like I see it as a complete attack at, a, at me. And so so I, I disagree because I see it as a dismantling of that idea of there are many Muslims out there, Sunni Muslims, who think that Muhammad did nothing wrong. And then they see a video of me talking about an instance of um, him doing something that they wouldn't Whether. expect to have seen him do. And that snaps them out of a situation where they would have in 10 years acted like Muhammad. Okay, I see that as like not retaliating or, or attacking. It's it's dismantling this well, idea of the you, holiness. Why, why of... don't you attack the system rather than the individual? And I'm telling you, the individual didn't say what they're saying. But you're paying. But he is the figurehead did. for the system. I mean, I, I I empathize with you. I understand why to you he's. Okay, he's... I, I think we should cut it there, and that's mm -hmm. it. Because I don't think I can get to you. Uh, I can't change you if if this is how you think you're making a benefit. I just wish you would consider the other people that. Like, you know what, he is he is a figure. But I love him as much as I love Jesus, though. You know, like, I get really upset. Like, I, I, I sometimes throw things at the TV and, and, and this, and I just want to break my computer when I see Family Guy and and uh, and South Park drawing Jesus in a very bad way. Like, I get physically upset. Like, you know, they're insulting. Well, is, isn't there a better way to deal with that emotion? Like, as even as a Muslim, I felt, like, upset when people drew no, Muhammad, I but I didn't feel, like, angry throwing I, I things. Think, I think it's a valid experience. It's a valid emotion. It's doing what you want. Like, I read, yes, I, I will throw a book and stuff. I won't hurt somebody, right? I won't, like, do go to that levels. But, I, I like, you know, you, it's like someone insulted my mom. I'd get pissed, too. Like, But th this person... No, th but that's the thing. It, it's not that someone insulted a, uh, your mother who's a faultless person who's just being insulted by, you know, because someone wants to get a rise out of you. Someone insulted a figure that God is supposedly protecting more than you ever could. So yeah. getting angry doesn't really help anything. No, no, no. But okay, so th that protection, the protection is whatever you're throwing at him is going to be useless. Like you, you're not going to, the people who are going to get guided, the people who are going to look for the information will overlook what you said and they just continue with their path. You're not going to affect the people who are like looking, searching, and trying to find answers? You'll affect the people who have doubts, and you'll no. I'm, I'm saying, like, for a second, the, the what, like your example of watching Family Guy. Like, if I were you, I wouldn't be angry because Allah no, can do I, more to them than my outburst ever could. Look, to me, the anger is like I have a genuine love for like Moses, Muhammad, Jesus, Abraham, and I have like a like you know like they're they're they're. Just like how people have love for for their presidents and their kings, this is how I view them. You see, these are my like leadership. These are my like, if 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 they're they're better than kings to me. You see, so like I have a devotion to their way of mentality and the way they dealt with people, and I want to uh, emulate and learn that. So it's like how Abraham dealt with like certain people and certain phrases on how Abraham spent. I I want to engulf that. That was the closest. So would they get angry that way? Uh, I think there's times where they got angry. Yes, when when they're getting insulted, uh, Moses clearly got angry when they when they when uh, the children of Israel were disloyal to God for no reason. So there is anger. Anger is an emotion, but it's how you right. But it. because someone like drew them or something, do you think they would have that reaction? It's not the drawing. You can draw, but it's the words that you put in their mouth and the way that you're painting them. So when some when when Family Guy is calling Jesus as a, a rapist, pretty much like when he's giving the girl uh, some wine and then he clocks the door, they're insinuating he's going to rape her. So I don't like people calling Jesus a rapist. And when people are going to draw Muhammad as a terrorist, Muhammad is not a terrorist. He didn't terrorize anyone. Nay, he was the one being terrorized. So like these concepts, I know people would like to argue, but I just don't like seeing it so and it's fair for me to get upset when they're drawing my profits like i love them you know yeah i know i'm just saying that i hope that for your own sake that you find a way to dissipate that 
that upset don't, or that don't energy. Don't don't talk to film. There's some things you're you it's it's okay to get upset about. The way you handle your upset, like how you're upset, it's fine. But I'm a hundred percent entitled to be upset when the people that I no, love I'm not saying upset. don't be upset or that you know it, yeah. it's fine. So what if they uh, you know draw Jesus that way or put him in in that sketch? Um, what I'm saying is like if it gets you so riled up that you have to throw something, like there must be a better way to deal with it. Probably is. Maybe there mm -hmm. isn't. So let's, it's not about how I'm dealing with it because I'm not causing harm to anybody. But the fact is that I shouldn't be on the air. And the fact is I shouldn't be seeing that. People should have enough respect. That's all. That's all how I think. And because these things happen, this is why the world is so polarized. Like you might not believe in it. You might not like it. You might think the other side's fucking crazy. Sorry, the, the world was polarized before any resistance or satire. But it's becoming worse now because I believe comedy is a cynical, it comes from a place of, of cynicism. So it's a cynical act when you're pointing to have someone being made fun of. Like there's a, a, like a comedy in where it's like unexpected, a joke and a prank. And then there's a comedy of where you're pointing flaws for other people to laugh about. And that's cynicism. And that's not good. That's evil in my, in my understanding. I hope that makes sense. It, it, it does make sense. And, and I don't I mean, really... You're, like... you're, a very, you're an intelligent person. Like I could see you have intelligence behind you. You have your knowledge. Uh, I believe maybe you like your personal... But not experience. wisdom. Not wisdom. I don't, I don't think you're wise. I don't think you're wise. But that's, again... I, I never call myself wise. I think it's always a work in progress. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. But you're, you you have intelligence. You Maybe you just... Maybe in the later in the future, you might say, consider what I told you, not what you learned off of me. Maybe because, yeah, I, I really believe like, you know, like if you just give it a different shot, maybe read it from a different angle. Read it from oh, a different angle. Trust me, I have. And it's not even in the future. I am constantly considering everything that you're telling me. That's, you know, part I of that. listening. I see that. I see that. And I, mm -hmm. I think maybe like you started this because of um, like, the hate you experienced and i uh, know okay. it's believe it or not like i'm i'm actually starting to tap into a little bit more now of any traumatic experiences i had with religion i'm starting to feel them now but they are never motivation nor the, nor are they a good motivation because then i'll run out you know once i'm out of anger or hate or whatever to to put back then i'll run out that that's not why i'm doing this but you see this is this is like like yeah you know, every once in a while, I click on. I, I'm having a conversation with you, and to me, it's the moment that I'm living in, and I always attribute it back to God. So I, I don't know. I, I felt like I had, I wanted to talk to you. I thought about it all day, and I did. Um, and the fact that I always turn it back to God is what makes my life makes more sense to me. And yes, the Quran, like and brother, I have it right here. Like to me, every situation I have been in my life, I've had an answer. I've had an answer. Like even right now, I swear, as, as I'm waiting for you, a different debater on a channel that I go to, he's Muslim. He he insulted me to a comment to someone. Someone said something about me and he insulted me. And I, I wrote him a message. I'm like, hey, man, like, like, subhanAllah, God, let me see your comment so that I could tell you like, hey, you hurt me. And there was no purpose for that. And then he wants to argue with me. But then I, I just remember verses of the Quran. Like, you know what? Like, are you going to guide who God um, is guided? Do not like, you know, spy on him. And that's the whole like, reason why I have this book and I love this book is just because I regurgitated so much in my head in different situations these verses come back to me and that's what I believe the angels are they just remind you of these verses so you just act accordingly so people it's like there's times when I wanted to like say things to you but no it just didn't feel right and there's times I remember verses so I just changed my word but people don't do that people don't use the Quran like that the Quran, they think like oh say this 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 you could say it in a lot of words and you could say it differently but I'm saying what the Quran is telling you Anyways, well, I, I wish you luck in your um, attempts to get people to see Islam the way that you see it. Brother, they're going to have, they're gonna have to very soon because we're heading to a world war. And when the world war starts, at that point, people are really going to uh, not care about what religion you are. They just want to know that you're going to be peaceful. You're not going to rob of their money and you're, you're not going to rob them of their food and stuff. And the war is going to happen. There's no left or right about that. Uh, I've have I have certain like so due to my job certain people but yes there's no left or right about the war the war is going to happen and people need to prepare for that 
And at that point, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter this whole YouTube stuff and all the stuff people are going to say because people are going to be extremely either vile or extremely very like uh, like uh, protective. So that's that's what we're heading into. And due to the fact that people are so polarized and heedless, like you're an atheist, but with a sense of humanity, most of them don't. And those people are going to act like animals. And those are the people that are going to be cleared up at the beginning of the war usually as fast as possible. And then it starts the point of survival. And then from survival, we'll see how it goes there. The war is going to probably start in the East somewhere. I'm not going to go into those specifics, but it's going to slowly come to here. So we're, we're, we're the lucky few that it might hit us at the very end, but it's going to hit us. So, the, so that's, so you have no choice. <laughs> that sounds very um, alarming. Yeah. Reality hurts. وَإِنَّهُمْ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لِلْحَقِّ كَارِهُمْ Mm. Um, and I will just uh, continue to hope that these conversations are as productive as this one was. As uh, you know, the the verse says, "Falsbud in Allah ma I like that. Um, yeah. Uh, so it is what it is, and uh, I'm I'm glad that you called in today. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for wanting to call and then for giving in a shot and calling. Yeah. And I appreciate your contribution. It was nice talking to you. Take care. Yeah, likewise. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thanks for making it this far. I apologize for not doing a better job at keeping the live stream topic in focus, but it was the sixth consecutive hour of a live stream, so I was a bit worn out. I appreciate the caller's civility, but to call it a good conversation would be the bigotry of low expectations. There was a noticeable amount of thinly veiled condescending remarks alluding to my lack of wisdom, claiming my view is dark and twisted, um, even deluded. And at some point insinuating that perhaps I was too much of a good kid and that's why I left Islam, which is ironic because the stereotype is that ex-Muslims are rebellious contrarians. Anyway, I was in listening mode, like I am with most callers, so I wasn't treating it like a dawa pitch. So I let him talk most of the time, and I didn't point out every time he contradicted himself or when he was gish galloping. So I wouldn't call this a good conversation only because it was civil. Uh, but it wasn't a bad conversation either, just could have been a lot better. A few things I found concerning. Uh, we talked about the purpose of life, and he asked why, as an atheist, do I live? Uh, why not just die? And he wasn't at all insinuating that I kill myself. But it was concerning that he said the only thing keeping him from suicide so he can rush to meet God was that it's haram. I hope he doesn't always feel that way going forward, because that's not a healthy way to live and it can be a bit dangerous. What also concerned me is his friendly warning about how I should be careful because Muslims also protect their loved ones, meaning the Prophet. And I don't know how you protect a dead man from scrutiny by physically harming someone else, but... He made it a point to mention the types of people who wouldn't be reasonable like us and have a discussion. Uh, though he himself never threatened me, I see it as acknowledging and utilizing the violent tendencies of others, rather than disowning them or preaching against them. And lastly, the stuff that he said about a war starting in the East and who's going to die first, uh, I'm not even going to touch that. Anyway, if you'd like to suggest topics and participants for future discussions, uh, please drop a like and a comment below. You yourself could be a participant on my live streams. Just subscribe and turn on notifications. Uh, I host several live streams every month, so I hope to see you there. And as always, think critically and think for yourself. I should never live stream for seven and a half hours again. That was... I don't know why I do this to myself.